Easier said than done for South Carolina. It's been a long time since they beat Clemson here at williams Bryce Stadium. you got to go back 14 years to 1987. And Clemson has won the last four meetings. And since Lou Holtz came in, he's on two against the Clemson Tigers. Uh, Jim, uh, Lou Holtz talked about this football game today. Uh, a real emotional week for him. And he, I think he's still wondering how his guys are going to recover from the loss last week to Florida. Yeah, devastating 54-17 loss right here at williams Bryce Stadium last Saturday night. And Bill, last week it was a sea of black as the fans and the student body here all wore black. And today I'm seeing garnet and white. They want to change everything from last week's uh, difficult loss to Florida. And in fact, Lou Holtz gave the players Monday off just to have another day to recuperate to focus on this game today versus Clemson. South Carolina won the toss, and as you see so many times throughout the course of the season, they have deferred. So Clemson will receive. And of course, they're in the white jerseys, as you can tell, on the garnet and white for South Carolina. Full house here at williams Bryce Stadium, ready to kick this football game off. This is returnable, and this is Derek Hamilton at his four-yard line. And a nice solo tackle at the 16. And that's where Clemson will take over first down. Clemson will take over first down and 10. Woody Dantzler, there's his season. And a lot of Heisman hype as the season got underway. But Clemson has struggled, losing to Florida State and Maryland, but still impressive numbers. And he accounts for a lot of the scoring in this Clemson offense. Now, Clemson in the previous two ball games against South Carolina has used some strange formations offensively. We'll see what happens here this afternoon. First down and 10, Dantzler in at quarterback. And it's a quick out to Hamilton. Great defense by South Carolina. Andre Goodman, the senior, makes the tackle. Here's the Chevy starting lineups. Let's take a look. Uh, at Clemson, and there is Travis Zachary. Jim, uh, maybe a guy who has not had the season that they, they thought he would. No, really hasn't had the big production they thought he might. And they, in fact, he's not scored a touchdown in their last four games, despite being Clemson's all-time touchdown leader. And there's Kyle Young as part of the uh, offensive line for Clemson. Second down, 11. Straight ahead handoff, taking it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Harney makes the tackle. Zachary, the ball carrier for Clemson. The Tigers come into this game, and there's the uh, South Carolina defense, and they're banged up. Lou Holtz said, even though his defense has been better than his offense all season long, that's not the case going into this game because of injuries. Sheldon Brown, this guy's going to be one of a, a fine group of pros who are in the NFL next season. Big third down coming up for the Tigers. And South Carolina has struggled on these third downs defensively this year. Hensler has time, but the pass incomplete intended for McKelvey. McKelvey cut in, and the pass went to the sideline. So an emotional good stop for the Gamecocks on the opening drive. And, Bill, exactly what the Gamecocks want on defense. They want Woody Dantzler to throw. Not that he's not capable of that, but he's a great running quarterback first and foremost. If you can make him throw, Carolina feels like they have a much better shot in this game today. Wincop on to punt. He's averaging 39.7 per kick with a net of 37. And back deep there, you saw him for South Carolina. Ryan Brewer. Plenty of time still on the play clock. Down to uh, six seconds. Returnable. Here's Brewer at midfield. And a nice return of 11 yards to the 39-yard line of Clemson. So that's where South Carolina will take over. First down and 10. Feaster on the tackle for Clemson. A 31-yard punt. Our South Carolina goes uh, 183 yards on the ground per game this season, 176 in the air, and we will watch how Phil Petty performs at quarterback. There's his season numbers, his final game in this stadium, and he'd love to go out a winner against our tribal points. And no doubt that on senior day at home, he's going to play in this football game as a senior and go as long as he can. Shotgun formation. And it's a running play. This is Derek Watson spinning, fighting, and three yards down to about the 37-yard line. Let's have a flag down on the play. Here's the South Carolina uh, lineup, and there is Pinnock, who has really taken over as the runner on this team as opposed to Watson, and he has accounted for 10 touchdowns this year. The bigger of the two backs goes 250 pounds. He's a load to bring down. 
the Bill Wharton part of an uh, offensive line that has been uh, very solid this year at the line of scrimmage. Well, he goes against South Carolina. Good chop block. Ron Cherry is our referee this afternoon, so that pushes South Carolina all the way back to their own 48-yard line. South Carolina doesn't get penalized a lot, only 45 yards per game, which is uh, almost half of what Clemson gets per game. Two well-coached football teams, though, obviously. Teddy will work out of the shotgun again. First down and 22. And it's a screen to Watson. And Clemson reads it beautifully. There's Kevin Johnson with a solo tackle. And now the Clemson defense, and uh, this is, uh, Jim, a much maligned defense. They have struggled this season. Uh, a lot of injuries. Uh, Nick Eason, uh, one of the better players up front. Yeah, the front seven overall, pretty solid. It's when you get into the secondary that they get burned. They'll play you pretty good on first and second down, but then they'll give up the big play after that, so they're inconsistent in that matter. And there's Halfley, who had 20 tackles as he moved to free safety a week ago against Maryland. Second down, 23. Eddie buying some time. Your side line, and that is incomplete up around the midfield stripe. Pass intended for Ryan Brewer. Brewer is such a versatile back. Of course, everyone remembers him from the Outback Bowl a year ago when he scored three touchdowns in that win over Ohio State. Like some of the other backs you've mentioned, his numbers uh, not quite so scintillating this year, but still an overall very versatile performer for South Carolina. And uh, so far, Jim, although because South Carolina has been penalized, they've had to throw, but both clubs coming out slinging the football in their opening series. And we really expect the Gamecocks to try to run the football throughout the course of the afternoon. Third and a bunch, third and 23. Again, the shotgun formation for the Gamecocks. He's got a scramble with it. And brought down at the Clemson 46-yard line. Yvonne Bush, the tackler for the Tigers. And there's Petty taking his first hit of the afternoon. Remember, it's his throwing shoulder. It's the right shoulder. He lands on his left shoulder on that tackle. They'll try to protect him as much as they can. And, of course, in this situation, Jim, the defense is sagging back. They're going to give Petty time to throw. They got everybody covered. And then a nice solo tackle by Bush. Tyler Dean is on to punt for South Carolina. And Joe Don Reams is back deep for the Tigers. Fairly short. Dean says, uh, Reams waves it off, but it takes a South Carolina bounce inside the 10 down around the 8-yard line. And we have another flag on the play. This is our uh, second flag of the football game. The crowd here at williams Bryce, and you'll see uh, 84,000 strong here today for this game. Probably about 10,000 or so will be wearing orange up there in the stands. That was a 38-yard punt, but uh, the officials now contemplating what uh, this call will be here. So the first call goes against South Carolina on a uh, chop block. And this goes against Clemson. All right, let's go to the Hyatt Regency in downtown Atlanta to see who wins the Dodge truck in Huddle House's fantastic football promotion. Second possession for Clemson, and they are pinned back at their own four-yard line. No score early going first quarter. That's Travis Zachary at the tailback spot for the Tigers. He's got the football. Up to about the nine-yard line. Senior out of Marietta, Georgia, Travis Zachary. And very highly recruited across uh, not only the state of South Carolina, but uh, many schools after him, including the Gamecocks. And he's had a fine career, Bill, here. He's a uh, second all-time leading rusher in Clemson history, second only to Raymond Priester. Got five that time. Dancer out of the shotgun. Second down, five for Clemson. He's keeping the football. And he's got a first down and plenty more up to the 22-yard line. And that's all you want to do with Woody Dantzler. He's such an exciting player. Get him around the edges. Give him a chance where he can create and make something happen with that great speed and the shiftiness. You just say, walk, watch him out of the shotgun and just take the ball and bring it to the near side. And uh, what he wants is one-on-one -on -one matchups with defenders. He gets those and he can usually juke his way out of them. Pickup of 12 yards on the play. So a little breathing room for Dantzler and company. First and ten at their own 21-yard line. Shotgun formation. 
Here's your option the other way. Dantzler keeper to about the 26-yard line. Jim, uh, South Carolina folks, they, including their defensive coordinator, Charlie Strong, they want to keep their guys in their lanes defensively. Don't over-pursue Woody Dantzler today. All right, as Charlie Strong will tell you, as a defender, you want to keep your inside shoulder where he and the football is. Keep him on the inside, flush him back into the other defenders, and that's the strategy. Protect your lanes. Dantzler got five on that carry. Second down, five. The action this time. Okay, nice catch up along the Clemson sideline. Spinning, fighting for extra yards. Roscoe Crosby. Freshman from Union, South Carolina. And that's another Clemson first down. And he's come on. He's had nine receptions over the past three weeks. He's been injured for most of the season. But uh, Lou Holtz, an admirer of Roscoe Crosby as well. One of those young freshman receivers. Clemson seems to have a load of them. They're learning on the field. They make some mistakes. But boy, are they talented at wide receiver, even though they are young. 11 yards on that play. Second first down of the drive. Clemson started at their own four. Now they're up to their 37-yard line. First down play for the Tigers. That's a change. Audible here at the line. Two on the play clock. There's the throw. There's the catch. That time it's Derek Hamilton. And he's up across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Rashad Faison, the tackler for the Gamecocks. Faison's made a couple of tackles. Now here's, again, one of the freshman receivers, Hamilton, that we've talked about is not only a great receiver, but a special teams player as well. In fact, Hamilton's so good, he leads the nation's freshman in receptions with 47 so far heading into this game. You notice those South Carolina defensive linemen just kind of playing it cozy at the line of scrimmage, worrying about Dantzler's speed to the outside. Second down and one after a gain of nine. In the middle. Oh, and a great catch and a breakaway at the 30. This is Curry. He's going to score for Clemson. Who says Dantzler can't throw out of the pocket, huh? <laughs> there he is, two plays in a row, throwing out of the pocket there, and three different freshman receivers making plays in a row, but we do have a penalty fly. Yeah, I think it would be for celebration after the, uh, after the touchdown catch. And there's going to be a ton of that today in terms of emotion and these players excited. It's going to be hard to contain. We have a touchdown on the play. The score stands. Touchdown after the score. We have unsportsmanlike conduct against the scoring team. That's a 15-yard penalty. Every party has a pooper. 54-yard <laughs> hookup. From Dantzler to Arise Curry. This catch of the year. And that was a fine pass up the middle, but also a blown tackle. And this tackle there leading to the big play. That's what you can't afford if you're South Carolina. The catch after the run. Aaron Hunt on to try the extra point now for Clemson. Of course, the hero in last year's game, one of them, I should say, after Gardner's catch with the, uh, the field goal to seal the victory for Clemson down in Death Valley and defeating the Gamecocks last year. Once again, Ron Cherry talking to the crowd about what the company is. Let's remember, uh, they started at their own four-yard line, got a couple of first downs, and then the big play down the middle for a touchdown. We got a 34-yard extra point. For the South Carolina fans, a uh, little silver lining in the Black Cloud start. But Clemson is on the board first on a touchdown pass from Dantzler to Curry. We're back after a word from your local stations. Here's the scoring play, Jim. Uh, end zone look at this touchdown pass from Dantzler to Curry. Yeah, 54-yard pass play, but you see so much of it coming uh, after the missed tackle. And then Curry does the rest on his feet as uh, Sheldon Brown missing the tackle, leading the big play. But look at the pass protection, particularly on the left side of the offensive line, as they give Dantzler the time in the pocket to make that play happen. And as we said earlier, that it's a quarterback that you want to usually try to keep in the pocket, but uh, sometimes he can hurt you from there as well. And a uh, very young freshman with a touchdown make. In the bank. Zara will kick off for Clemson. Ryan Brewer deep in his end zone and he will not come out with it. So the ball will come out to the 20 yard line. When you take a look at the numbers that these teams have put up this year, 
Clemson and South Carolina. Uh, most of them, Jim, are pretty even. Uh, I think, uh, as you can see, the passing yards there, a little bit more on Clemson's side. But you go through everything else, and they are just about even, except the at turtle the bottom, margin. Yeah, the bottom. And th that is where Clemson has struggled this year. Minus seven, and look at South Carolina, plus six, being opportunistic. Yeah, we've got a full house backfield now for South Carolina as they line up three behind Petty. And here's a handoff in the backfield. The Brewer trying to turn the corner. He's got some running room. Breaks a tackle at the 30. And up to the 36-yard line. Rodney Thomas had a shot in the backfield, but unable to bring down Brewer. And the chance of Brewer from the a stance here in Columbia. But breaking that tackle turned it into a big play. 17 yards for the junior from Troy, Ohio, who made a main name for himself in the win over Ohio State in the bowl game last year. He just turned the corner and uh, some good moves. And uh, once he got by that initial tackle, good running room. And this is more of what we expect from South Carolina in general today. They're probably going to run the football a heck of a lot versus Clemson. Petty out of the shotgun. It's a quick out, and it's Brewer again. Clemson reads it, but he fights off a couple of tackles. Up to the 42-yard line, Chad Carson to help out bringing him down. But another nice game for the Gamecocks, who would like to establish something, uh, a good drive in this game. They trail early by a score of 6 to nothing. Clemson missing their extra point. It's a five-yard gain on that play. Brewer might be in outback bowl mode today, the way they're using him <laughs> early here. I mentioned Thomas missing the tackle on the previous play, coming back to help make the tackle that time. And again, it's a Clemson defense that will give you the big play. Uh, but, you know, they'll, they'll hold you three and out, three and out, and then you'll hit them with the big play. So we'll see if South Carolina might be able to exploit that at some point, especially on the corners. Betty, hands off Watson this time, and there's nothing there. John Leak, the tackle for and a penalty flag. Yeah, yeah, flag down. John Leak, the third leading tackler for Clemson on the season with 95 heading in, able to corral Watson that time. The officiating crew very busy here in the first few minutes of our football game. Unlike the end of last year's game <laughs> <laughs> between the two. You couldn't get a flag. And it's a holding call against the Gamecocks. And remember this happened on the last drive for South Carolina too. They backed them up. Yeah, Gamecocks started inside uh, Clemson territory on their opening drive. Holding on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. We'll replay the down. Very solid offensive line, though, for South Carolina in general. Lou Holtz was raving about them yesterday, and most of them go around the 300-pound range as well. But they have really been a big key to the South Carolina offense this year, despite that holding penalty. And one of the guys the pros like is the starting right tackle, Melvin Page. We'll keep an eye on his back. Uh, he was taken out of practice Thursday with a sore back and maybe struggling with some back spasms. Today. Second down, 15, South Carolina. Deep ball. Oh, out of bounds. Age is the intended receiver, and he just ran out of real estate. A nice throw by Petty, so if there were any doubts about this guy's arm, with Mance on the coverage, no doubts on that throw. And exactly what we were talking about from the Clemson perspective just a couple of plays ago. You can test their corners deep, and in that case, it's number two, Brian Mance. And there was definitely separation there, a chance for a big play. Uh, that throw just barely uh, carries the receiver out of bounds, though. Otherwise, that's a touchdown. And uh, Laurel Johnson, the center for South Carolina. There you see him. He is uh, on the sideline and banged up. C.J. Fry takes his place on a crucial situation. Third and 15 for South Carolina. Balls at their 32. Again, Ages goes up. Can't uh, hold on to it. But that would have been well shy of the first down. So, uh, once again, South Carolina. And penalty, penalties hurt them on the first two drives as they try to generate some momentum offensively. And that's uh, not to be because of penalties. And once again, they'll punt. And we'll not make the injury excuse. But uh, we'll, we'll see as the game goes on about Petty's arm. It's, it's on the follow-through that he's going to feel the most pain from that uh, deep bruise he has to his shoulder. And when you're feeling that pain, you tend to overthrow the football. And that one was just too high. Tyler Dean for his second punt of the afternoon. Nice kick, Brian Mance floats under it at his 23. And a big return up to the 36-yard line, brought down by Rod Thomas. 46-yard punt. So when we come back, it'll be Clemson football, and they've got the lead here in Columbia, South Carolina, 6-0.
Clemson with the lead and the football as they start at their 36-yard line. Ramberts at the tailback spot. He's got the football and a nice gain off right tackle up to about the 43-yard line. Kenny Harney and on the play for the Gamecocks. He's going to have to pick up some of the swag. We haven't really talked much about it, but Kalimba Edwards is out. His backup, Jeremy Garrison, is out. Harney, uh, maybe the defensive leadership role falls to him today. And with Edwards out, you use a guy who has uh, 11 quarterback hurries this year. He gets to the quarterback, forces things to happen. We'll see that affects his defense as this game wears on. Right, South Carolina, not a team that gets after the quarterback a whole lot without Edwards, a lot less. Rambert again, flag on the play. He's up to the 45-yard line. Robinson makes the tackle for the Gamecocks. A lot of yellow stuff flying early in this <laughs> yeah. game today. Well, prior to the snap, false start, offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty against Clemson. Tigers are five and four and not quite bowl eligible yet. We'll get to that after we take a look at the movement that happens. Yeah, a little, uh, the right side of that line got a bit of a jump on the play. A little bit jumpy there. As we mentioned, uh, Clemson about 81 yards per game in penalties. That's a little bit of a high figure for them. So uh, it's been part of the story for the Tigers this year. Second and 10 now. Shotgun formation at their own 36-yard line. There's a quick out. There's Hamilton taking it upfield across the 45. Excuse me, that's Crosby. Crosby makes the catch, so his second reception of the ball game. Uh, out of Union, South Carolina, much heralded as he arrived in Clemson uh, from baseball camp. Uh, he was uh, signed by the Toronto Blue Jays, a pick in the draft, and he already has a check in his bank account for $1.75 million. Guess he's buying pizza <laughs> in the dorm, huh? <laughs> Kidding. And he's a strong runner. When he gets the ball, he breaks tackles. Here's Dantzler, quarterback keeper on third and short, and that'll be a first down for the Tigers up at the 48-yard line. That's a no-brainer anytime you can call Woody Dantzler's uh, number there. As we mentioned off the top, some incredible silly numbers uh, in the early and middle part of the season, but it's tailed off a little bit. Only five touchdowns over his last four games. And the play's coming from the sidelines, and the Tigers not uh, in the huddle. So they, they get it. They're at the line of scrimmage and ready to go. Plenty of time on the play clock. First down at their 47-yard line. Dantzler keeping it himself in good pursuit by the South Carolina defense. And there's Kenny Harney again to make the tackle. Harney had nine solo tackles versus Florida a week ago, a game that otherwise should be forgotten by the folks around here. When you're on the road to watch SEC football this season, plan on eating at Huddle House, where you can order their big house breakfast and lunch platters anytime, 24 hours a day. Second down called well, just the other side of the 50-yard line. Hansler keeps it himself, and then Neesmith has to chase him down. Jonathan Martin on the tackle as well. Neesmith, one of the seniors here, and they're a good job as Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina, told us yesterday, stay in your rush lights. And they did a good job of keeping Dantzler in their sights. Once again, uh, Clemson running these plays without a huddle, but there it's, it's not a hurry-up offense, but they just get to the line of scrimmage. Dantzler gets the call from the sideline, and here we go. Third down, three. There's your cutback. Good play by the defense. Kenny Harney on the tackle along with Langston Moore. And this will be very close. May have to bring out the chains. Dancer should be, depending on the spot, looks a little bit short. Maybe uh, a little bit less than a yard short. So this will bring along fourth down. And decision time for Clemson here. The decision's been made pretty quickly. Fourth down, a little less than a yard to go. Dancer wants to pass down the middle of the field, and it's picked off by Sheldon Brown. 40-yard line. Weaves his way to midfield, and a huge play for the Gamecock defense. And I don't know if you'd call that a trick play or not, but certainly a surprise to throw deep on fourth and inches as it was, or maybe fourth and a, fourth and a foot or two, but a big defensive play there by Sheldon Brown, a preseason candidate for the Thorpe Award. And we were told before the game that maybe on third and short or so that they would try to pass, and that was a surprise they tried to pull on fourth down this time. Yeah, the ball, uh, I don't think it was underthrown that much for Travis Zachary, but just a super play by Sheldon Brown. Great awareness. 
And then not only does he make the interception, but then he looks at what he's got going. And uh, it's going to be a 30-yard return in all, but unfortunately... Another penalty. Another penalty yeah. against the Gamecocks. And that's going to back it all the way back to the 20-yard line. It's still their ball, but instead of being up at midfield, it's back around the 20-yard line. As we said, South Carolina plus six in the turnover ratio, but they don't really create a lot of the turnovers. Mostly it's uh, with taking good care of the football on offense. So a big defensive play there, but you hate to give up the field position right away after that. It's Watson next to uh, Petty in the shotgun. First down for South Carolina. Watson, oh, man. Eric Sampson blew through right away. He's the one that forced that play in, and then uh, Javon Bush was there for... Clemson and Jim this is a South Carolina team that's averaging 167 yards on the ground but they're having a hard time getting something going. Yeah Clemson will load up that box they'll put eight players or so in there on the defensive front and, and that's kind of their mantra they're going to try to stop the run and make South Carolina throw the football and uh, Petty will have to work out of the shotgun and probably do just that. Yeah, lost three there second down 13. Incomplete. Oh, was that intercepted at the 20? No, it falls incomplete. Brian Scott, the intended receiver, and Brian Mance with a shot at it. Fans, jpsports.com has the coverage you want. No one knows the SEC like JP Sports. And we bring the inf information to you online. Tune in each week for previews of upcoming games, broadcast information, and many other exciting features. For the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. I thought that was a catchable ball for Brian Scott. It was a little bit high, but certainly catchable. Took his eye off of it, and nearly a big takeaway that time for Clemson. Gamecox 0 for 2 in third down conversions. They need 13 yards on this play. They've got it. Scott down the middle. And a big play for the offense. Meekins makes the stop for Clemson and the little breathing room and a first down. And unfortunately for the Tigers, their story this year, third down they have struggled. 46% they allow other teams to convert. And this is another case of it here. Right over the middle. And Scott, who was the intended receiver the previous play, the top receiver for South Carolina. You've got to have two guys on, on the top receiver. And you see him come right in the middle of the field once again here. Right among three Clemson defenders and picks up third and 13, converts it for the first down. Well, the Gamecocks now at their 42-yard line. Here's the first down play. Oh, Petty on a keeper. And, and another a, penalty flag. And another, yeah, let's have another one. He got a few yards up to the 44. Leak makes the tackle. Petty of the, the three quarterbacks, uh, not the most elusive runner, but a better runner this year than he's been in the past, and it adds a nice dimension to the Gamecock offense. This is going to be a South Carolina penalty, though. A little chop block. Another chop block, second one on South Carolina. Obviously a point of emphasis with the referees today. And Lou Holtz wants to find out, uh, okay, now just what the heck is going on here? Well, that's been the story for them today. We have an illegal crackback on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. We replayed the bad. I mean, it's early in the game. It's self-destructing, but with penalty after penalty in the first quarter of this game, I know Lou Holtz has to be really fired up and not in a good way about it. Well, Lou told us last year about uh, one of their drives in Clemson that was like 20 plays. This could be one of those drives. <laughs> 20 something plays going. and no points, right. <laughs> 20 plays without scoring. Shotgun formation, first and 23. There's a kick out. Good. Head tackle there, missed, and he's up to about the 36-yard line. Sampson and Thomas combined for the tackle for Clemson. Yeah, that was a head-hunting tackle that missed that time. Luckily for Brewer, able to duck under it. Sampson trying to take the helmet off. Saw that Gamecock logo. Saw blood. <laughs> <laughs> Number of other games already underway. Dogs leading at Ole Miss early. Look at that, Kentucky on top. Trying to make up for what the basketball team did the other day. The Buckeyes going with a backup quarterback today. Ready with time. Ages has the ball at midfield. Nice catch. And wide open. I mean, nobody near him at midfield at the 50-yard line. Nearly enough to pick up the first down. The deep ball has been the problem for Clemson's defense all this year, particularly on the corners, and uh, that's where Petty's trying to exploit them now. I'm sure South Carolina would like to run the football, but they have an opportunity today to throw the football, especially at the corners. There's another big third down play early in the ball game. 
third down, a couple yards to go. Ball's right at midfield and some confusion defensively for Clemson as Lou Holtz hopes his offense can keep things going here. Really jamming the line of scrimmage here on third and two. Clemson is defensively. Brewer. And he not get the first no, down. I don't think one. so. Donnell Washington with the key hit for the Clemson defense. I really think if uh, South Carolina is going to beat this uh, Clemson defense today, they're going to have to throw the football. And that means Phil Petty. because, And we'll see more than one quarterback today for South Carolina. We'll definitely see Corey Jenkins. We could see Pinkins at some point. But Petty's your best chance at throwing the football when he is out there. So that's where you want to exploit it here. We saw Clemson go for it on fourth down. Now we'll see if South Carolina decides to go for it. And uh, South Carolina has called a timeout. Uh, Petty is, uh, no, they haven't. They're bringing the chains in. Okay, we've got an official stoppage in play. Phil Petty talking to uh, his coaches on the sideline, and they're going to bring the chains all the way across. Looks like they're about... Should uh, be short. Yeah, by about a yard, I yeah. think. Kind of surprised they're measuring. But it buys more time for the <laughs> yeah. thinking process, if nothing else. Ask for the measurement. And they're going to go for it, much as Clemson did. Of course, it didn't work out too well for Clemson, although it was a gutsy call, I thought, by Tommy Bowden. Lou uh, Holtz with his son Skip calling the plays offensively. And here we go. Fourth down. And strength versus strength. The, the Gamecocks, power rushers, and Clemson's best asset on defense is stopping the run. So there's going to be a whole lot of head knocking going on here on this play. Unless they go with the gadget. Again, the full house backfield. And there's Petty changing his call. Plenty of time on the play clock. Pinnock with the football. He's got the first down off right guard. Well, when you've got a guy 5'11", 250 pounds, you just roll him over the right side of the line and you pick up that yard, and that's exactly what they did running number four, Andrew Pinnock. And uh, difficult to bring down, even if you are good up along the defensive line like Clemson. You just go right behind those big boys up the right side. Got some good blocks. Melvin Page, who you mentioned earlier, is a good prospect. Limba Edwards not playing today as a senior. That They wish they had him out there, but he likes the reaction there in the first down. Yeah, that's the end of the first quarter of play, and it's been an interesting one. And so far, Clemson with the only points on the board. Through 15 minutes, it's the Tigers 6, Gamecocks nothing. Well, so far, a Woody Dantzler touchdown pass to Curry, 54 yards on the second possession of the game. That's our only scoring. Clemson 6, South Carolina nothing. They did miss the extra point. And it was a long extra point because uh, they were penalized before that. Start the second quarter. First and 10, South Carolina at the Clemson 45. Oh, Petty's in trouble. He gets rid of it. Boy, he was drilled by Rodney Thomas. And we've got a flag down. Yeah, threw that one away, and uh, that's going to bring the flag out as we look at the stats here for the first quarter. Yeah, the Cat Rental Store first quarter stats look like this. And, uh, well, you can see time of possession about even. Total yards uh, certainly on Clemson's side, thanks to their long scoring drive of 96 yards. Uh, penalties, however, there you go, Jim. That's the big story of the first quarter. Well, and as you're talking about the penalties, there's one thrown for intentional grounding, as we mentioned uh, prior to the stats against Petty. But 50 penalties, uh, 50 yards of penalty versus South Carolina in the first quarter. And now we're going to attack on this for the uh, intentional grounding. Uh, it's, it's just not typical of South Carolina to have that much penalty yardage. They like mentioned heading in 45 yards per game in penalty yardage is their average, and now they're well over that here. We've just started the second quarter. So Clemson uh, now back on their side of the field at the 44-yard line. Petty working out of the shotgun. He's got three receivers to the bottom of your screen. Look out, Brewer gets a block. Nice move at the 50. And once again, Ryan Brewer showing us some stuff as Khalid Vaughn finally brings him down in South Carolina back in Clemson territory. Brewer getting some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the short pass, basically a long handoff, and he can just kind of juke and make some moves off of that. And again, Clemson very aggressive on defense. They send a couple at the quarterback, and that leaves Brewer with the opportunity for some one-on-one -on -one breaks. Good block set up down there by his teammate, Scott, and uh, on he went after that. And now the line of scrimmage again. Here we go, another third down. Third down and 12 in the Clemson 47-yard line. And he floats it up downfield. Oh, that's a free ball, and that's intercepted. This is Francis at the 18-yard line, and Petty's also was pounded as he let the football go. Matthew Thomas, the intended receiver. And the blitz forcing that once again. Petty just had to release the football. 
I mean, as you said, you described it perfectly. Up for grabs. Petty drops back to throw. Sees the pressure coming from the right side of your screen by John Lake, and that was just up for grabs and not a chance for the reception at all for Matthew Thomas. Torrey Francis with the interception. That's his first of the season. Just like that. Thompson gets the ball back a little uh, almost as good as a punt if you want to be a I want to look at the positive for South Carolina. Running play on first down up to about the 20-yard line. Travis Zachary carries for Clemson. At halftime, we'll be taking a look at the Altel halftime stats. That's the thing we'll be focusing on is penalties. That's always exciting when you look at the penalties. <laughs> Let's see how many penalties we had. Go back over every chop block, every uh, intentional grounding always makes for a good second. You know, and some calls you have to make, but sometimes you want to just let them play. Unless these are, and you really have to look at the highlights and, and single out the, the chop blocks that they've called and things like that. So you had no problem with the end of game call, on call here. Please, don't be involved in this game. <laughs> Option for Dantzler, he's going to keep it himself, but he's not going very far. And the Gamecocks have done a good job of containing Dantzler on the run. They, they wanted them to throw, and that's where they've been burned, was on the long touchdown pass, but they've kept Woody Dantzler from taking off and running, and that's priority one this game. Dantzler and the Tigers have not uh, qualified for a bowl game yet. Now, they still have to play Duke in a couple of weeks. But this is the one they want to qualify for the bowl. I've been talking to Lou Holtz yesterday. I'd like to stuff that idea. Well, this is like a bowl game today, only bigger. Third down and five. Dantzler in trouble and going down. Dennis Quinn got him. Dennis Quinn. Win had an injured knee drain earlier this week in practice. The status was unknown, but uh, great acceleration that time in getting after the quarterback, Woody Dancer. They continue to do a good job of containing Dancer so far in this game. Good penetration into the offensive backfield, and there you see Quinn wrapping him up and dropping A six-yard loss on the play, so the punting unit is back on for Clemson. Wincock will do the honors. And there's Ryan Brewer. Returnable. Brewer get it right at midfield. And a 10-yard return to the 40-yard line. So once again, South Carolina comes up with excellent field position. But because of penalties, they have nothing on the scoreboard. We're early in quarter number two, and it's Clemson, six to nothing. All right, South Carolina with the football. They're at the Clemson 40-yard line. First down and 10. Was in front of him. A gain of almost 10 yards depends on the spot along the South Carolina sideline down here the 30-yard line. That's what makes Brewer such a great weapon. Is he a tailback? Is he a slot receiver? He can do either thing. He can run or he can catch the footballs we've seen in the past and really hasn't had the chance to run the ball a whole lot this year. Only 88 yards of rushing on the season, a 3.5 average, but because they thought maybe throw, uh, got a little misdirection there and the play works. Let's go down to Warren Pepper down on the sideline. Yep, Holt's biggest concern was could Phil Petty throw it deep? Would there be a problem if he got hit? So far, he's shown a little problem going deep. The underneath stuff seems to be look, working. They have gotten to him a couple of times, so Holt's concerns before the game started have certainly been well-founded, but to this point, Petty is gutting it out in this final game in his senior year. And a first down on that play as Andrew Pinnock took uh, just a simple handoff right over center. First down for South Carolina. At the Clemson 28-yard line. It's been their deepest penetration of the ball game. So Watson in the tailback thought, oh, he had motion all over the place. I don't see a flag. Watson running up the middle to the 26-yard line. That's when you're not watching that it's happening. <laughs> I mean, Thomas makes the tackle. Boy, I thought Watson and the fullback both moved at the same time. I saw a flinch as well. <laughs> Before the snap, but uh, no flag this time. Watson jumping over the line, too. And uh, again, but a good job. And you see a little bit of a slide there by Watson that time. Clemson will try to challenge you at the line of scrimmage. They'll, they'll line up against the big teams like Florida State and stop the run and dare you to throw over them. Unfortunately, that's been the problem is when teams do throw. Usually successful. So far, not today for South Carolina. Second and eight. 
Watson's in trouble and he had nowhere to go that time. Lee Ball and led the charge for Clemson. John Lee helped out as well, but there was uh, Jim just just a simple pitch around the corner. That <laughs> wasn't even looking there. No, not that time. And again, you know, Clemson jamming the line of scrimmage and taking away the short run so far against South Carolina. And I wonder at what point we'll see Corey Jenkins because we see Corey Jenkins in most games for South Carolina. He's played nine of the ten games as at least a change of pace. And uh, so far, we've just seen the one quarterback, Petty, for South Carolina. So now third down, ten for the Gamecocks. This play action. Look out, he got hit, but he got it away, and it's caught by sideline. Brian Scott dives for the first down. Excellent move after the catch. Brian Mance makes the tackle, and Penny got drilled just as he let it go. Got drilled below the waist, though, down around the knees, able to get enough mustard on that throw to get it away. And you watch him get hit from behind. He's sensing the pressure coming from behind. Right as he releases, bam, right at the knee. And he gets up and uh, is walking around okay. And that's Brian Scott able to make the catch with that 6-3 frame and stretch out for the first down. And here's the change of quarterback for at least a play. Yep, Corey Jenkins is in a quarterback for South Carolina. He's got the football. He's going to run it himself and tackle him. 15-yard line. And Corey Jenkins is a running back disguised as a quarterback. He's an option quarterback, not much of a thrower, but a terrific threat nonetheless. And what a marvelous uh, opportunity for him. Uh, he grew right up here in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, did sign here at one point, but decided to play professional baseball. Ended up going back to college, and now he's here as a senior. He grew up right in the shadows of Williams Bryce Stadium, and now here he is. Second down about seven. Pitch Watson. Got a bounds around the 12-yard line. Francis Watson. And the tacklers for Clemson. Folks will tell you Watson not having the kind of season he had last year when he was a thousand yard rusher so far this season leads South Carolina with 537 yards of rushing but not getting the same opportunities he's had some fumbling problems but his yards per carry pretty good 4.9 yards per carry and uh, Torrey Francis is hurt he was in on that tackle for Clemson and now he's flat on his back and the training staff out to look at him so the, the change of quarterbacks and at a crucial point in the football game with South Carolina driving they're at the Clemson 12-yard line and now faced with a third down and four situation. Clemson on top by a score of 6-0. If you're just joining us, the only score of the football game was a uh, touchdown pass from Woody Dantzler to uh, one of the great uh, speedster freshmen, Arise Curry. And 6-0 uh, is our score. Skip Holtz will uh, tell you as far as the quarterback situation goes as we look at Francis being attended to down there. He'll change quarterbacks based on feel. He'll just have a feel of uh, when it's appropriate to move one or the other in and out, and that's why you always see two quarterbacks, the possibility of seeing three. And we hope this isn't serious for Clemson as far as the injury with Torrey Francis. He had the interception earlier. But there you see Skip Holtz in the offense. And, Bill, we're seeing more coordinators uh, working from down on the field, and Skip Holtz kind of unique for an offensive coordinator that he's not up in the booth but down on the field. And uh, we get a look at the replay here. As you can see, the uh, two Clemson players trying to make the tackle. And Maybe around the shoulder and yeah, the neck didn't area. Look, uh, didn't look all that serious when uh, the tackle took place. But uh, hopefully just seeing little birdies right now and nothing more serious than that. So we've had Petty start. Jenkins is in. But, Jim, uh, the heir apparent next season when you look at the South Carolina football team, it's Donville Pinkins is the guy they're talking about who could be the leader next year. Yep, Pinkins uh, is only a freshman but a second-year player here. So he's been in the system for a couple years. And there's Francis getting to his feet. So that is good news for Clemson. They need all the help in the defensive secondary uh, that they can get this year. So Tommy Bowden's crew has struggled defensively this year. But back to, uh, as you're talking about, the Clemson or the South Carolina quarterback situation, Pinkins has size. He's 6'3", 230, and probably overall the best package in terms of the, uh, the backup quarterbacks that can throw and run. And when Jenkins throws the football, these are going to be simple passes by him. He's not going to sit back there and uh, go on second and third reads. Uh, and, but as far as that's concerned, he's not going to be quarterbacking this play because Phil Petty is back in a quarterback. And here's our situation, third down and four for the Gamecocks. Petty goes out for two plays here, but a throwing situation, you want him back on the field. Third down four from the Clemson 12-yard line. Looks it up. Scott after a tip. It's caught! No! Oh, a drop! Oh, almost caught! 
Age has had it on a deflection as Brian Scott went up for it, and it goes incomplete. And I believe that's a design play. Scott goes up, intentionally thrown high ball. Scott tips it backwards, the old tip drill there, and it nearly works. A little bit of gadgetry. You're going to watch again. Just floats it up high. Gets the matchup one-on-one. -on -one. Two defenders will actually come over for Clemson and watch Scott try to just ricochet it backwards. Uh, but it's deflected just enough by Hayfleet to make it fall to the turf. Could have been one for the ages. <laughs> but it wasn't. You were going to work that in at some point. <laughs> well, Clemson will now try a field goal. Daniel Weaver will do the honors. Excuse me, South Carolina tries a field goal. This will be uh, 29 yards away. And this is up, and the Gamecocks are on the board. So they finally got something. It came uh, midway through the second quarter here in Columbia, South Carolina. So our score, 6-3 Clemson. Back after a word from your local station. There's our score. There's the time remaining here in the second quarter. A sold-out williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. The annual tussle, the backyard brawl between Clemson and South Carolina. And uh, the Gamecocks just on the board. 29-yard field goal. Nine plays, 28 yards on the drive. So 6-3, Clemson on top. And the kickoff, and this is a... Outstanding group by Bowers, about five yards deep into the end zone. Clemson will take over at their 20-yard line. Let's go back down to Warren. Yeah, Bill, you know, Francis went down in that last play. He, oh, by the way, is a walk-on from the Columbia area. Walked on and actually made the team now playing at Clemson. He will be back in. Uh, he's shaken up. They said he was a little dizzy when he went to the sidelines, but he is probable to return to the defensive lineup. And Warren, I wonder, too, he strained his neck at Maryland last week if maybe that came yeah. to haunt him there. Dantzler out of the shotgun. First down and 10 Tigers at their own 20-yard line. Off to oh, oh, I don't want it. There's a couple of linebackers coming my way. Let's try again. Well, thrown behind Zachary a little bit. He tried to reach back and get it and run up field as well. He's in between the hash marks there and a, a little bit difficult to, to haul in. Catchable, they say if you, if you can touch it, you can catch it, but that time Zachary unable to haul it in. I'll go three receivers to the bottom of your screen. One to the top, Dantzler with the second down 10. Shotgun formation. Good defense. And Faison. Stamper was the guy who made the play. Number 91. Boy, he fought off a couple of blocks, Jim, and made that play. One of the seniors here on senior day gets up around the uh, the shoulder and pulls the uh, the shirt off the shoulder pad of Dantzler there. Breaks out of the tackle. Does a good job of fighting his way out of the block of a kill Smith. And he was not going to be denied. It's tough to track down Dantzler, but he did a good job. Third down. And eight yards to go. Zachary over the middle. Trying to fight an extra effort. He gets the first down up around the 31-yard line. Came back to the play they ran on first down. Zachary that time. The ball leads him just perfectly enough. But Bill, then you mentioned it. It took the extra effort and the strong running of Zachary to get the first down. I thought he was going to be two yards short when he caught it. I thought they had him stopped at the 29, and he fought for the extra two yards. Once again, the Tigers going. It's a no-huddle offense, but it's not a hurry-up offense. Dancer will work out of the shotgun. He is now over the 2,000-yard mark in passing this season. But he's just a runner, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's the pump fake. Oh, and that is caught. Roscoe Crosby with a great play along the Clemson sideline. That's and a big grab. Yeah, the 47-yard line of South Carolina, Sheldon Brown on the coverage. Watch the throw again. Dantzler setting up out of the pocket and throws a bullet that time. Now, there's a penalty flag down that we'll check out, but again, one of the freshman receivers, Roscoe Crosby, highly touted, goes up high to get it, and he's a, he's a strong receiver, 6'3", 200 pounds. But it's coming back. This time the penalty, oh, we got... Uh, offsetting. Offsetting penalties, personal fouls against both teams. Imagine that in this game. <laughs> Offsetting personal fouls. I can't believe it took to the second quarter to get to this point. Tommy Bowden says, what? Here's Ron Cherry, our referee. The completed pass on the play. After the play was over, there are two fouls on the field. 57. We have one against the offense. 
15 yards, dead ball, personal foul. They have a dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Those penalties offset, first down. In other words, nothing. Play holds up, nothing changes. New Holt's not uh, happy with the way the flags have been flying today. We're going to catch what happens after the play. You're dancing, releasing, and they just continue to go after it. The block that wouldn't end. A little dancing after the play. And then a kick. Uh, right, as they, oh. right as they're walking away, Langston Moore with a little kick to the behind. Dantzler. Running them shuffle. Breaks the tackle at the 40. Look out. Dantzler, nice cutback move. And caught from behind around the 23-yard line of South Carolina. So there's the Dantzler that a lot of ACC teams have had to uh, put up with all season. Neesmith brought him down. That's the dance you said that uh, you expect to see. He's, he's good for a couple of those kind of plays per game, breaking off the long run. First time it's happened in this game today, but he comes into the ball game with 768 yards of rushing, a chance for a 1,000-yard rushing season as a quarterback. First and 10, Clemson at the South Carolina 23-yard line. Lambert breaking tackles. And down to about the 15-yard line. So, Jimbo, we've seen... Uh, a nice play to get a first down upfield by Zachary when they thought they had him stopped. He got the extra two, and that time Rambert with extra effort breaking tackles, and he takes the ball down to the 14. And that one just a simple power rush, nothing fancy about it between the tackles. They just run right up the middle of the South Carolina defense and say, try to stop us. We'll see if they come back to it again. Usually if that kind of a play works, you keep running it until the other team stops it. Got tight ends on each side, one running back. It's Rambert. He's got the ball spinning down to about the 12-yard line, but that is good enough for the first down. That time the Gamecocks more prepared, but as you said, short yardage situation and a different desired result. You're just trying to pick up the first down. Clemson has won the last four games of this series, 10 of the last 13, and the last time the Gamecocks have won in this stadium against the Tigers, 1987. And to put some perspective on that, Lou Holtz was in his second year at Notre Dame when uh, last South Carolina won here in Columbia versus Clemson. First down, 10, Tigers on the move. The ball's on the South Carolina 12-yard line. Flag on the play, and they actually blow the play dead. I think it's going to be a running play, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that was going to be a running play. Getting dancer around the edges, which is what uh, Clemson would like to do. Brad Scott, the offensive coordinator for the Tigers. Of course, they'll be marching off a few yards here. Well, Croft did the snap. Ball start offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Still have first down. You mentioned Brad Scott. And, uh, well, we'll talk about Brad Scott in a second. Let's uh, go down on the sidelines again to Warren. Yeah, Bill, it's interesting. You know, Brad Scott, of course, coached here for five years. He thinks Woody Dantzler is better than Charlie Ward, who he coached at Florida State, because Ward had better players around him. Got him a Heisman. And a contract with the Knicks. Pump fake. Zachary with it. And down to about the eight-yard line. Langston Moore on the tackle for South Carolina. Nicely designed screen pass off to the left that time. Just needed about one more block, and he might have gotten into the end zone. But uh, well conceived and a good job by Dancer to hang on to it long enough to let the blockers get upfield in front of Zachary. The thing I was going to say about Brad Scott was a uh, former coach here at South Carolina, and really the media's kind of laid off in recent years asking him about this matchup now that he's a coach with Clemson. He's recruited a lot of the guys on the other side of the field today. Second down call, handoff, and no and nowhere. Zachary is Rashad Faison came through and made the tackle, the leading tackler on the South Carolina defense, and he makes a nice play there. One of their safeties and uh, nine tackles versus Florida last week. Of course, the defense probably had a lot more tackles than they wanted. Losing that game 54-17 last week here. So now a third down situation for the Tigers. This is the 10th play of this drive. The ball is on the Gamecock seven-yard line. In red zone 22 out of 30 possessions. Touchdowns for Clemson this year. Ansler buying plenty of time. Faison can't make the tackle. Clemson and the pass incomplete as Dantzler floated to the near sideline trying to hit Jackie Robinson, and now it's fourth down. Wouldn't have counted if he caught it. Steps out of bounds before the ball came there as he ran out of real estate. Uh, Robinson with the groin pull didn't play last week, and now they're going to have to settle for a field goal.
So here's Aaron Hunt, time to do the honors. This season, eight of 10. His misses have been from 31 and 35. This is gonna be a uh, 25 yards. Left hash. Scott's the holder. Kick is up and you can tell by the crowd here, it's good. They weren't cheering that one. So the field goal by South Carolina answered by the Tigers. And we've got 5.02 to go here in the first half. It is Clemson 9, South Carolina 3. Oh, how many happy faces in this stadium. Well, if you're a South Carolina fan, you're still smiling. You're trailing by a score of 9-3, to three, but uh, very much in this football game. And we've got a good one coming on December the 1st. Uh, Woody Woodenhofer's finale as Vanderbilt takes on Old Miss. Kickoff at uh, 1230. We're on JP. Here's the kickoff. Watson in his end zone, about three yards deep. It's one tackle, but not this one. Down at the 15-yard line. Come here, Watson. I need you. <laughs> Torrey White on the tackle for South Carolina. So Phil Petty and company. Huddling around Skip Holtz. That was a 14-yard return. Trailing by a score of 9-3. to three. The South Carolina's had some very good field position. Penalties have hurt them. And they're able to get a field goal on their last possession. But really, you get inside the 20, Jim, you get in that red zone, boy, you want those seven points. Yep, unfortunately for Clemson, having to settle for the field goal. And this may be one of those low-scoring games where every point's going to matter at the end. So again, the full house backfield behind Petty. Well, that play didn't work. Philly Vaughn makes the tackle. And that was Gauze. Andre Gauze uh, carried the football that time. First time we've seen him in the backfield today, and uh, nothing doing there. Now, full house backfield, and the house was broken into as a jailbreak there. And uh, at Clemson's defensive front line, you got to say, they are manhandling many times South Carolina's offensive line, and really the Gamecocks offensive line has been one of their strengths throughout the season. So that's a good job by the Clemson defense. The officials having a problem spotting the football. Now they got it uh, down at the eight yard line. Petty works out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Second and 16. And the throw Brewer had to go way up top to catch it. And uh, the momentum takes him out of bounds at the 10-yard line. And again, we mentioned with the deep shoulder bruise, Petty may have the tendency to overthrow that football. Where he's going to have his problem is on the follow-through. Where he feels the most pain is going to be on the follow-through of the football. And we've seen him complete and also incomplete some high passes. Everything's been high, nothing low. So Petty, third downs today. South Carolina, two of seven on those conversions. And it's third and long here. And you don't want to make any mistakes on this side of the field. You're at your own 10-yard line in a close football game. He puts it up. It's caught. Great catch. Buzz at the 46-yard line. First down. Big play by the South Carolina offense. Kevin Johnson beaten on the play. And unfortunately for Clemson fans, they've seen that too many times. In fact, go back to last week. Kevin Johnson was burned a couple of times by the Maryland wide receivers, exploited by the Terrapins, where he was called for two pass interferences and burned on two other long ones. And that time, Goss able to get behind him. That's a big third down conversion. Let's see how Petty looks on the throw. We talk about the bruise on the right shoulder coming through. And you see, not, not real fluid on the follow through. He's been throwing those balls up high, kind of chucking them up there. But that time, because the corners are not so strong for Clemson, he's able to get away with it. Yep, 36-yard gain, and Johnson was beaten on the play. And maybe the ego was damaged as well. Well, adding injury to insult. <laughs> the psychiatrist to check that one out, and team trainers will take a look at uh, the physical injury. 36 yards, that's the longest third-down conversion of the year for South Carolina. And now they're working at their own 46-yard line. Only 9-3 late second quarter. Bobbled snap and the handoff to Derek Watson. He gets a couple. Come on, Bush on the tackle for Clemson. And again, the Gamecocks just not able to run that football through the teeth of Clemson's defense. So Clemson doing a good job of loading it up on the inside. It's going to be how much does South Carolina want to dare to try to beat them deep. Substitutions defensively for Clemson in this situation. 
South Carolina, three receivers again to the top of the screen. Petty out of the shotgun. Second and nine. Pump. Oh, there's no flag. There it is. There's a guy. There's three of them. It's a confetti party. <laughs> Envy. Envy the guilty party for the Tigers. Matthew Thomas, the intended receiver. And you don't like to get beat, but better to draw the penalty flag than let a touchdown get scored. That's what Hemby had to do. Talented freshman. In fact, he's had to step into the starting lineup for two games. Uh, probably the, the best option he had at that point after getting beat on the slanting pattern. And there's the uh, call, and we get a look again here at this play. And had a beat bit on the pump. Matthew Thomas the coming across. That's a spot foul. Automatic first down. So that is freshman on freshman. The young bucks learning out there together. And Hemby just having to take the penalty flag as opposed to allowing the big play. And there is uh, Clemson's oh, offensive oh, coordinator. Richard Herring. Richard Herring, Herring, yeah. Pulling his hair out. You can see the uh, results. <laughs> <laughs> Hudson. Running the football straight ahead. Nice push by the offensive line of the Gamecocks to the 35-yard line. 85,000 the attendance here at williams Bryce Stadium this afternoon. You know, last week they had the game day crew in here, and uh, they got invited to the governor's mansion to sleep over and stuff like that. I, you know, we had a nice dinner and all last <laughs> night, but I don't feel the same, you know, key to the city kind of feeling for the JP crew. Well, if they win today, they'll want us back. Watson breaks the tackle, cuts outside. To the 13-yard line. Brian Hemby finally forces him out of bounds. And a late flag after the play. Oh. Probably against Clemson. We'll wait to see. That's the way the Gamecock players are indicating. It sure is going to be against Clemson. Probably tacked on to the end here. And now success running the ball. It's a personal foul to call. And that's where the, the pass sets up the run. The Gamecocks had been unable to run, but a, a couple of throws, and it opens up the running game. It's the pass setting up the run. And they're marking this off. And just the spot of the is around the 13 yard line, the point of the attack. After this is to the goal, automatic first down. So just about everybody on their feet. And that everybody, you mentioned 85,000. That's a williams Bryce Stadium record. Breaks the previous mark of 84,900 set last Saturday versus Florida. <laughs> Ball's at the six-yard line. First and goal for South Carolina. Again, the full house backfield with Pinnock, Watson, and Brewer. Watson. He's in. Touchdown, Gamecocks. Playing with a hip pointer and a bad knee. Both suffered last week versus Florida, but the adrenaline's going to pump on a day like today. Derek Watson was not going to be denied the end zone and his fifth touchdown of the season. That was a nice long drive. Remember, South Carolina had third and long backed up in their own territory before the long pass set up the rest of the drive. Weaver on to try the extra point, and he's got it. And for the first time this afternoon, the Gamecocks have taken the lead. One more time, the run by Derek Watson. As he'll run around the left side of his offensive line, he's got his fullback teammate Pinnock in there to lay a block as well, but uh, really not much resistance by Clemson. That was three strong runs in a row by South Carolina and uh, culminating in the touchdown run by Derek Watson. And down on the field to Warren. Yeah, Bill, uh, remember the comment made yesterday as it regards Derek Watson when we were talking with Skip Holtz, and I kind of asked him, has it been a, a down year for Watson? Has he been less productive this year? And he talked to us about the fact that he's got, what, 50 to 60 fewer carries this year, but he's still pretty productive at almost five yards a carry. So they believe he's still a very real threat in their offense, but what they've tried to do is spread the wealth around to get the ball in the hands like Pinnock as well as Brewer and let him still be effective when given the opportunity. That NFL mentality of running back by committee. And frankly, uh, Warren and Bill, Watson and Pinnock, two good running backs, but they combine for only 19 carries per game. That's between the two of them, 19 carries per game. They're just trying to spread it around and get everybody involved. And of course, you've got running quarterbacks that you can bring in as well. That's part of the rushing total too. Well, the Gamecocks are ready to kick off, and they've got the lead here late in the second quarter. Good beat. 
Here comes Hamilton. And dropped at the 30-yard line. Nice return. And Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we will be highlighting the best in the SEC. Presented by Don Pablo's. One of the best in the ACC you're getting a look at right there, Derek Hamilton, in terms of young players. So dangerous. He had a 100-yard kickoff return versus Maryland last week. When he was in high school, his senior year, eight kickoff returns for touchdowns in one season. All right, 2.13 to go. You see the clock. You see the score. First and 10 Tigers at their 30. And so with time. Ball tipped in the air. Knocked down at the line by George Gauze. Six, Second and ten coming up. 6'5", 223 pounds, just a freshman, but Gauze got both hands up and deflected that pass back into the face of Dantzler. So plenty of time. If Clemson wants to try to establish a good driver in the final couple of minutes. Second down and ten from their 30. Dantzler keeps it himself. And he's got good room across the 35 near the 39-yard line. Rod Thomas, the junior from Deland, Florida, makes the tackle. Gamecocks going with just three along the defensive line, trying to prevent the big play. They don't want Dantzler busting loose on a long run here late in the first half. They'll give up the short yardage. They don't want to give up the big play, but this is a short yardage situation on third and two. A third down to Clemson. At their 38. Dantzler decides to keep it himself. Looked like he was debating that as he was making the turn upfield, but he's got the first down to the 41-yard line. Gauze, the tackler for the Gamecocks. He ducked like he was going to think about pitching, but Zachary had already turned the corner. He had no choice but to keep it here. He's just trying to sell the fake here to freeze the defenders for a moment, and it worked. He got the two yards he needed for the first down. With these teams coming off uh, emotional weeks, so the loss by South Carolina to Florida last week, and uh, Clemson's lost their last two to Maryland last week, Florida State the week before. First down call, dump off to Zachary. And he's up near midfield, about the 49-yard line. Gone to that play a couple times, just a little simple swing route where Zachary comes out of the backfield, and uh, Clemson's going to burn a timeout here. Now up to midfield now, it's taking them uh, less than a minute to get to there. South Carolina leading by one in a game that has been uh, a lot of penalties. Had some turnovers in this one, but uh, the emotion is there, and the, uh, the these two schools just, uh, just just don't like each other. Go back down on the field. Uh, Warren's got some more for us. Yeah, Bill, I thought uh, one thing that was very interesting that Lou Holtz uh, said on yesterday was that their best chance of winning this was to keep it low scoring and to also kind of keep... Clemson well within grasp. Uh, they've certainly been able to achieve that. I think the biggest concern on the sideline right now for South Carolina is making sure that Woody Dantzler doesn't do what he has done in many games late second quarter this year. And that is just take control of it and get a very last second almost cheap touchdown kind of thing where he just steals one from you and then it takes you into the locker room with a nice bit of momentum for the second half. Easier said than done trying to stop Dantzler sometimes. Uh, prior to this drive, Dantzler had 52 yards of rushing. Uh, he was 7-11 passing for 125 yards. So Woody Dantzler having a typical Woody Dantzler kind of performance so far. And of course, uh, the other story of this first half has been penalties. There have been 11 penalties in this first half. Five to the Gamecocks for 61 yards. Six to Clemson for 48 yards. But I think uh, the, the big penalties early against South Carolina prevented them from gaining any offensive momentum. They've gotten that now here in the second quarter. You know, Warren might call that the ugliness of this game. <laughs> That's an inside joke. <laughs> second down and three for the Tigers. They're up near midfield. They're 49 yard line. Another option left. Dantzler's got the football. They'll take it to the Carolina 45 yard line. Langston Moore brings him down. So uh, that's a uh, Good enough for a first down run. They'll stop the clock for mm -hmm. just a moment. They reset the ball, and now the clock rolling again as they move the chains. Shotgun formation. Another dump off to Zachary. 
And that play has worked successfully for the Tigers here in the first half, and he takes it down to about the 37-yard line with Harney bringing him down. Gone to it four times in this quarter alone, all of that to Zachary, and three times it's worked. The first time it was thrown behind him, but the Gamecocks giving up the underneath stuff and making Clemson use another timeout as they're short of a first down. And Clemson has uh, yep, called that timeout, so both teams uh, go to the sidelines. Uh, defensive coordinator for South Carolina is Charlie Strong. And uh, we haven't talked about this yet, but his name has been mentioned as a possible head coaching candidate at Vanderbilt. Although we didn't really talk with him about it yesterday, figuring he had more work Probably not the, the time to ask about it heading into the Clemson game, but uh, he'll be a head coach somewhere before long. And there you see uh, there you see Charlie, with well, the back of his head anyhow, talking to the players along with Lou Holtz out there. And uh, certainly a strong defensive coach. Florida's burned a lot of teams. Uh, not much you can do to slow down that team in particular this year. So Charlie Strong's unit uh, feeling a little down this week and then having to pick themselves back up to get ready for this Clemson game. But when you have a rivalry game like that, it's the best tonic. Get back on the field and get jacked back up for another big football game. Take a look at some uh, scores from other action in college football. And now Ole Miss with the lead on Georgia in the second quarter. Where's the Tennessee offense today? <laughs> And the Buckeyes showing Belisari uh, out there. Give you the designated driver there. And Georgia Tech, their usual offensive explosion. Let's see if their defense holds up today. Second down, three yards to go. Tigers are on the South Carolina side of the 50 at their 38. And there's Zachary again. And he's brought down at the 30-yard line. Excuse me, that's uh, Aris Curry, number nine, who makes the catch. Gamecock's laying back in kind of a soft zone right now. As Warren mentioned, not wanting to give up that big play to Woody Dantzler, trying to let that clock run, but still 33 seconds. A lot of time for uh, Woody Dantzler to operate with the offense. And a lot of huddle. First and ten. Throw over the middle, and that is dropped. It's incomplete at the 25-yard line. Derek Hamilton had it there. Couldn't hold on. Good coverage in the secondary. And that time, the Gamecocks sending a couple of extra players at the quarterback, though picked up nicely by the Clemson offensive line. We'll send a couple of linebackers up the middle, and we'll watch it from the end zone view. Each one gets picked up. Some good protection for Dancer, but he has to settle for the underneath route, and it's broken up. Second down and 10, Clemson. The clock says 18 seconds to go. Second quarter. They're trailing South Carolina by a score of 10 to 9. Six on the play clock. And the South Carolina defense asking for some noise. They got it as Dantzler drops back to throw. And that's incomplete. Jack. Uh, Matt Bailey, the intended receiver. There. And now with third down and 10, and only 11 seconds remaining in the first half, you, you have to start thinking field goal. And maybe picking up not only a couple of yards, but getting it on the part of the field you want, and your kicker's going to be comfortable uh, kicking a field goal from Aaron Hunch. Uh, so we'll see what kind of a play call they come up with here on third and 10. And his longest is 48, and uh, it would be about that distance if this was the line of scrimmage, the South Carolina 30. Third and 10, 11 seconds to go in the half. Again, Dancer with time, floats at far corner of the end zone, jump ball, intercepted in the end zone! Well, they weren't taking field goal, they were thinking touchdown, they came back to bite them, second takeaway in the game now for South Carolina. Yeah, and the second for Sheldon Brown. So Clemson went for it all, opting not to even uh, have a chance for three, they put it up, and another great play by Sheldon Brown. I guess the thinking was that maybe they were comfortable with the field goal range to try it. Let's try to get six, and then we'll settle for three from where we are. But a jump ball, and as you said, Sheldon Brown, second time, able to get the, the pick off there. And now South Carolina's Phil Petty will come out, take a knee with just three seconds to go here in the half. And that'll do it. So 85,000, about 75,000 rooting for the home team today. And it's been an interesting first half uh, full of uh, penalties, some turnovers. But in the end, a late touchdown in the second quarter for South Carolina by Watson. And they've got themselves a lead. This is uh, one of the great rivalries in college football. And uh, both coaches head to the locker room now at halftime. And I'm sure they're going to try and regroup. 
go over some things uh, that mistakes, uh, what mistakes have been made, uh, and let's let's go down on the field to Warren. Clemson comes calling, and they've. Uh, the Tigers have done well in this stadium over the past few years, but uh, right now at the half, South Carolina with the lead by a score of 10-9. to 9. Uh, Jim, uh, you were questioning a little bit uh, the decision by Clemson at the 30-yard line, third down in field goal range to go for it all, interception, and in a close game like this, boy, you hate to give up a field goal opportunity. Yeah, one-point game, but a gamble. They thought that, uh, you know, you got a chance to make a big play. You, you go for it there, and maybe you settle for a long field goal try. I thought they might have tried to go for a shorter field goal try and set that up, but uh, a lot of football left to be played. We'll see whether or not that's a factor here at all. So, yeah, because uh, South Carolina deferred they get the ball to start the second half, and this half is underway. Low kick. Is that going to make it in the end zone? No, it goes out of bounds. So South Carolina will get excellent field position to start this uh, second half of play. So already we have our first flag, although that's... Uh, <laughs> Five <laughs> seconds into the second <laughs> half. We have our line. first flag. So we'll see what uh, if there's any change of strategy for the Gamecocks. Uh, we wondered about Phil Petty. Lou Holtz uh, worried all week. Actually, he was more concerned about his defense and the injuries he's had there over the last couple of weeks, including some uh, devastating injuries against Florida. But uh, Holtz also worried about his quarterback, Phil Petty, and his throwing arm. But so far, that has not been a factor, at least from our viewpoint, in this football game today. So South Carolina starts at their 35-yard line, first down and 10, and that's Petty in a quarterback in the shotgun. And he hands it off to Watkins. Oh, look at this hole. And the near a first down as Derek Watson carries the football. Happily makes the tackle, but a gain of nine yards on the play for the junior. There is uh, Petty's numbers in the first half, 108 yards. And in all honesty, uh, penalties really hurt the, the uh, first couple of drives in the ballgame for the Gamecocks. So they had better field position than the... Uh, it turned out they would have because of penalties. And those numbers, all things considered, pretty good for Petty, averaging 154 yards passing per game. Well, some of his offside there. It's a kick hitter to Andy Pinnock, and he's got the first down. John Luke makes the tackle. Gamecock struggled running the football for the first quarter and a half or so, but in the second half of the second quarter, uh, they started to find their rhythm and some holes in running the football, and they've come out here strong to start the second half by running a couple of times and picking up a first down. out of the shot the most of the ball game. Go ahead running play. Watson with the football. A few yards to the midfield strike. And once again, Leak makes the tackle. And this was the expectation coming into the ball game that South Carolina would try to pound away at the Clemson defense. But again, Clemson doing a good job for a good part of the first half in denying that. We'll see if this uh, becomes a point of emphasis for Skip Holtz and the Gamecocks offense trying to run the ball more here in the second half. A passing down. You've got second down seven. The ball at the midfield stripe. It's our opening drive of quarter number three. The blitz was coming. Here's a quick out and the catch. And this is Brian Scott, and he is close to a first down, tackled by Eric Meekins at the 44-yard line. So that's about a yard shy. Third reception in the game for Brian Scott. He had two for 36 yards in the first half. This is a safe route and not something that's going to test Petty's arm uh, too much either. He's able to make the short and in intermediate uh, throws with that sore shoulder. The deep balls are going to give him more of a problem. It's called third and two now. Wincox three of eight in third down conversions. Full house backfield. Brewer this time, and he's got the first down to the 41-yard line. Ryan Brewer's had an excellent ball game this afternoon. Chad Carson finally makes the tackle, but Brewer gets the game. Cox a first down at the 41 of Clemson. Line him up and let him go. As you said, Brewer all over the place here. He had three carries for 28 yards in the first half, and he had four receptions for 23 yards, making him the top receiver. He's such a versatile back. A lot of late substitutions by that Clemson defense. They finally get some people at the line. It's out 14 here. guys out there. Right? <laughs> Shotgun formation on first down. Draw play. And well, heading on a keeper. And we've got the few yards to the 38-yard line. You take the hand off to Watson. And Polk makes the tackle. More of a quarterback draw as it turns out on that play. And Petty, again, he's running the ball better than he has previously at Carolina. And that's uh, that's something they need to make this offense go. And he's gone most of the way in this game. They really haven't changed it up much by going to the bench and bringing in Corey Jenkins. 
South Carolina will have one more game after this. It'll be a bowl game. Clemson, meanwhile, has yet to qualify for a bowl game. They've got one more game against Duke in December. And this time the handoff is to Watson, and uh, not much there back to the line of scrimmage. J.J. Howard, the tackler for the Tigers. It's a pretty conservative approach here to start the second half for South Carolina and as this game, if it stays close, and, uh, we get later into it as well here in the second half. We'll probably see more of that. It's really not been a series that's had, uh, in the words of Skip Holtz, a lot of gadgetry to it. It's been a pretty uh, straightforward game. There really are not a lot of gadgets and exotic plays that are brought out during these games. Third down and seven for the Gamecocks at the 38 of Clemson. He's in trouble, got a scramble, oh, spun around, oh, almost got the first down. Great extra effort by Phil Petty and tackled a yard shy of the first down. Well, he took a pop at about the 35 and he kept the legs churning. And now he wants to go for a first down. It's going to be fourth down, a little over a yard. Big decision here for Lou and Skip Holtz. I think that decision's made already. Yeah, Penix coming yeah, in the Penix, ball game. Penix coming in and... When you got a back that big, you got to think about him. Of course, they went to Ryan Brewer on a short yardage situation a couple of plays ago. And you better hurry up here. You got six on the play clock. Fourth down, about two. They have to get to the 31. Fourth down call for South Carolina. Then he keeps it. I don't think so. It'll depend on the spot. He had to get to the 31 yard line. John Leak met him and hit him. Rodney Thomas, part of that tackle as well. Good stout defensive push that time by Clemson against a very good Carolina offensive line. Got good defensive penetration. It's all going to come down to the spot. What was his uh, progress? They're going to bring the chains up for sure here. This is going to be close. Got to get right to the 31-yard line. Kind of screened right now as far as the ball placement goes, but I mean that marker is right on the 31-yard line. Players are going to uh, block the view. The <laughs> players pointing it. <laughs> it's a first down. Look <laughs> like they're lobbying, trying to sell their point. Well, good, tough effort back to back by Petty on a couple of tough runs. Well, it was just enough. And a first down for South Carolina, so the drive continues. Well, it started at their own 35 after the kickoff to start the third quarter, went out of bounds. Ten plays into this drive, right here. That's a handoff. That's their one yard to the 30 yard line. Some of the fans uh, venting their frustration with some of the play calling right now, but hey, it's gotten down to the 30 yard line. Brian, Brian McNeil makes the tackle. As we said, Watson had a bigger overall season last year, a thousand yard rush here a year ago. And had a huge game versus Clemson. He rushed it 25 times that day for 150 yards in the close loss to the Tigers. And Corey Jenkins has now come in at quarterback for the Gamecocks. So I'm briefly in the second quarter. He's in on a second down and nine from the Tiger 30. Straight ahead handoff this time. Watson the ball carrier, Bush the tackler. And now third down, a long situation for South Carolina. Petty's along the near sideline talking with the Skip Holtz. In a passing situation, Petty comes back in. But again, it's a field situation with Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator, in terms of how he wants to run these two quarterbacks in and out. They've been doing it all season here. And Cox 4 10 and third down conversions this afternoon. Third and seven. Here's the call with Petty out of the gun. The draw play up the middle. And Watson tackled at the 25-yard line. Rodney Thomas saves a huge run there with that tackle. Yeah, Thomas has been all over the field today. He's really having an outstanding defensive game for Clemson. That's just a great open field. One-on-one -on -one tackle preventing the first down. Well, uh, the decision now, obviously, go for a field goal here. This will be a 42-yarder by Daniel Weaver. Kimmery's the holder. Weaver's longest this year, 43. Right in the middle of the field. It's right down the middle, too. He's got it. Daniel Weaver connects right down the middle. So South Carolina takes the opening kickoff in the third quarter. They put three points on the board. We're in the third in South Carolina 13, Clemson. 
gorgeous day here in Columbia, South Carolina, and the uh, cheerleaders having a good time. They've got the lead after uh, an impressive drive to start the third quarter by the Gamecocks. Uh, 13 plays, 40 yards in 7 minutes, 10 seconds, and Weaver connects on a 42-yard field goal. Yeah, you talk about shortening the game. Opening drive of 7 minutes and 20 seconds, uh, chewing up nearly half of the third quarter as they just ran the ball and continued one. A dangerous man for Clemson, Derek Hamilton. Troy Bowers will do the honors kicking off for South Carolina. Hamilton's got it at the goal line. And he takes it up to about the 34. And that's where we'll see Dantzler and company for the first time here in the third quarter. Here are your numbers again. 13 plays, 40 yards. And as Jim pointed out, that's a long time, nearly half of the third quarter. South Carolina had the football. That's the best way to stop the other team from having the football. <laughs> Especially when another team's got Woody Dance. The more you can keep the ball out of his hands, the better your chances of victory. By the Dantzler with huge games this year against Georgia Tech, NC State, and Wake Forest. Shotgun formation on first down. Oh, gotten a drop at the 35-yard line. And uh, Roscoe Crosby should have caught it, didn't. It'll be second down and 10. A little bugaboo coming back to bite Clemson. Talented young receivers, and in fact, in this game, Crosby's made some fine catches. Uh, but that time drops a simple one. He had three grabs for 42 yards in the first half. Just decided to take off running before he had secured the football. When you think about the future of this Clemson team offensively, with the, these three rookie wide receivers they have. Wow. Dantzler barking out his call here at the line. Four on the play clock. Quick hitter and a big hole up near the 40-yard line. And this is Chad Jasmine, number 10 with the football. Brian Brownlee. Zachary who carried the football up to the 40 yard line we got an injured Gamecock now being tended to right at the spot of the tackle Brownlee the guy who made the tackle the training staff have uh, walked him to the sideline other freshman playing in this game today 6'3", 235 pounds Clemson is three of eight and third down conversions. Here's their ninth try, and the crowd making a lot of noise. Rooting the defense on. Third down and four from the 40-yard line. Clemson in their own territory. Plenty of time for Dantzler, but nobody's open. And pushed out of bounds along the 40-yard line. Far sideline, Rod Thomas chases down Dantzler, held his ground, didn't let him get by, and Clemson will have to punt the football. Dantzler trying to turn the corner, but obviously trying to throw the football first. That's a good defensive secondary play by South Carolina denying the throw up field. Win Cop on to punt again. And Brewer is back deep. Top of Georgia transfer. <laughs> Snaps a good one. Wincock setting up a return. Brewer's got a back cover. He started his 13. By one Tiger, but not the second and third. He's brought down along the 18-yard line. So South Carolina gets the football back. And we've got the lead in our football game it was a 47 yard punt and uh, just about a yard or two on the return very few of his punts are returned this year in fact coming into the game Win uh, Wincop had only 11 punts actually returned this year leading the ACC only 71 return yards on 35 punts so essentially two yards per punt return when teams have tried to run and we got a penalty here yes we do flags flying all over the place in the stadium today so I'll hold everything. Ron Cherry, our uh, referee, was uh, yelling over at uh, Tommy Bowden, explaining what the call is. Lou Holtz uh, talking to his guys, trying to figure out, hey, what? get out there and find out what the problem is. Well, Tommy Bowden has not lost 
to South Carolina. There's a rivalry, a short stay here in St. Paul. Lou the other way in reverse is yet to beaten uh, Clemson in this series. These great rivals who meet each year. When you're on the road to watch SEC football this season, plan on eating at Huddle House, where you can order their big house breakfast and lunch platters anytime, 24 hours a day. Gamecocks bouncing back pretty nicely, you'd have to say, from the 54-17 loss to Florida. A lot of emotion spent on that game and getting back up again the week after this uh, for the, uh, the Clemson rivalry game here today. Tommy Bowden's team coming off a tough loss to Maryland, 37-20 to a week ago. They dropped three of their last four games, so two teams kind of in similar situations, Bill. Started out good, high expectations, and things kind of petering out here down the stretch run. One of these teams is going to turn their season around with a win today. Yeah, and in all honesty, for South Carolina and Lou Holtz, he got them to 8-4 last year. They win a bowl game, so they come in this season, and there's three games to circle on the calendar. Florida, Tennessee, and Clemson. And they were beaten by Tennessee, and if you hear the South Carolina people talk, the guys in the striped shirts were wearing and uh, the orange. Holding, which is a PSK foul on the return team. Ten yards from the spot, first down. And South Carolina will be pinned back inside their 10 down on the seven yard line to start this drive. So, what, but as I said, South Carolina faced uh, with three huge games that they want to win. When they get that schedule out, when are we playing Tennessee? When are we playing Florida? When are we playing Clemson? We know when the Clemson game is at the end of the season. But uh, they lost to Tennessee, lost to Florida, but uh, got a chance to win this one today against Clemson. 6.40 to go, third quarter, and we'll be back after this message from Advance Auto Parts. South Carolina football as they start this drive. They've got the lead. They've controlled this third quarter of plays, their second possession, first possession, for over seven minutes. Watson trying to find some running room. Not much there. Maybe a yard. Rodney Thomas makes the tackle for Clemson. Penalties in this game. Six apiece. Clemson penalized six times for 48 yards. The Gamecocks six for 71. And uh, they were penalized on that punt. Uh, got somebody with a timeout. Official timeout. Yeah, official timeout. Things were moving too quickly. We got to <laughs> right. pause to catch our breath. <laughs> so now uh, Ron Cherry is going to talk to. Uh, all right, I guess. I guess maybe there was some stuff going on at the line of scrimmage uh, after the play that uh, we weren't looking at. Uh, we'll see if we can find a replay for you. Imagine that happening here but yeah he's pulling the captains aside saying you know let's knock it off let's play some clean football here I'm gonna start throwing the penalty flag some more you hate to see it come down to an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty so that's what that's all about and now we're gonna change of quarterback once again it's be Corey Jenkins coming on for about the third time here it may not be even so much the, the physical pushing is shoving to the trash talk he's got mm -hmm. an all-time high in a game like this Corey Jenkins is now back in a quarterback for the Gamecocks We've got Derek Watson off to his right in the shotgun. It's second down and nine. Plenty of time. Down the middle of the field. He's got a receiver, and it's incomplete. Oh, boy. He had broken through into the secondary. Thomas. Thomas, Thomas had two receiver, two defensive backs chasing him, and if that's on the money, that's a huge play for the Gamecocks. Pretty well thrown ball by a guy who's not known as a throwing quarterback in Corey Jenkins. You watch him dip back into his own end zone and release. Shows good arm strength. Good throw, throwing the deep post route there. And I had a chance if Thomas could have cut in a little bit more. Sometimes it's not quite to the shoulder you want it. Yeah, I was going to say, if he'd have kept cu cutting at an angle, it almost looked like he floated down the center of the field instead of angling over. What did Jenkins play in baseball? Is he a pitcher? Teddy's <laughs> <laughs> back in the QB for South Carolina. Play action. Good third down play. He's got some time. Now floats it upstairs. And we're way over the sideline. Yeah, his arm may have been hit when he released and uh, getting rid of it at that point. Had pretty good protection. That's a secondary coverage problem there. He couldn't find an open receiver. Yeah, Ages was the closest Gamecock to the football. And it actually landed in the arms of one of the kickers, Joey Bowers. They're so often overlooked for their receiving skills. <laughs> and here's Tyler Dean on to punt. And Brian Mance will do the honors for Clemson returning the kick. So far, two kicks, uh, punts, 42-yard average in our game this afternoon. 
Ooh, almost blocked. Hanson take it. It is the 47. He fumbled the ball, but I believe the Clemson has it back. So a dangerous special teams play. Ryan Hemby was able to fall on the football. Nance got popped after he ran for about a yard, and then the uh, ball came loose, and Hemby falls on it. And so often close games like this are decided by turnovers like that. That one avoided. 5.29 to go, third quarter here in Columbia. So far, still South Carolina on top. We're back after word from your local stations. We got a defensive ball game going here, and it's a tight one here in Columbia, South Carolina. Clemson with the football. They're trailing, but they're at the Carolina 45 first down. Dantzler quarterback draw. Forget it. Antoine Neesmith. The first of many Gamecocks to get through. Dantzler so far in this game, 10-19, 147 yards passing. He's run the ball 14 times for 70 yards. Good numbers in the game. The two interceptions slowing down Clemson so far. And, of course, the missed extra point following the penalty. Dantzler running the option. Keeps the football, hit hard, and progress down around the 42-yard line. Offered to Neesmith combined to bring down the Clemson QB. You know, interesting, Jim, talking to some of the NFL people. I think Dantzler would like to be a quarterback in the National Football League, but the scouts look at him as maybe a third or fourth round draft pick as a running back. And I think most of the college opponents who scout him treat him as a running back. Sure, he, he's a throw for over 200 yards a game. That's his average, but his strength and his real value is what he does in the open field running the football. That's certainly going to be his future. That was Charlie Strong looking at his defense, seeing if they can make a stop here. It's third down and seven. Tigers at the South Carolina 42. So it pumps, scrambles. In big trouble, and he's just going to throw it away. Great defense by South Carolina that time. They, they they didn't chase Dantzler around and lose their position, and they force a punt by Clemson. And let's go back down on the field. I think we have a, a penalty flag down there. Let's uh, no, okay. Let's go back down on the field to warn. Yeah, Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator, said if there is a penalty, decline it. He likes to be downfield because he says he wants to look at his players' eyes. He doesn't like that whole thing with trying to communicate information via the headset up top. He wants to see them face-to-face. -face. He's practicing his head coaching technique. That's what he'll be before long. <laughs> Here's the punt, and it's a good one. Oh, and it's right at the goal line, and then uh, boy, kicked off Hamilton's foot yeah, into the end zone through. Ball will come out to the 20-yard line. Get the call is back, and this year is your chance to win every weekend with Ice House. Saturday during the game, a few lucky consumers will get a winning phone call, and one of those winners will get to see their favorite team play all season long. It could be you. See participating Ice House displays or visit icehouse.com to register your phone number. Ice House, official beer of JP Sports Broadcast. We'd like to congratulate Stephen Emerson from Bells, Tennessee. Last week's Get the Call grand prize winner. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents who are 21 or older. And Watson on a draw play on the handoff from Petty. Nothing happening there. Stamper blew right through. Or excuse me, not Stamper. It wasn't Stamper going through. It was Bryant McNeil for Clemson. And yeah, now look at this from the end zone once again, and you'll see Rodney Thomas come into the screen as well, uh, helping to blow up this play. Uh, Thomas has been just a fixture. He's the one who comes in around the ankles and knocks down Watson, and uh, we'll have to check his tackle totals when we can. He has made, he's got to be in double digits by now. He's having a huge afternoon. Lost about five on the play, so it's second down and 15, and Petty once again works from the shotgun. He got rushed, but he got it off to Scott. And he'll take it up the sideline and a nice gain to the 27-yard line. Eric Sampson chasing down the senior wide receiver and another guy uh, who NFL people look at for his ability to run after he catches the football. And Jim, those rack numbers are key in college and pro football. Sure, he's a senior, good size, 6'3", 214 pounds. And you were talking a moment ago about Dantzler on the other side. Well, size is what's working against Dantzler in terms of being a quarterback. Listed at 5'11", probably closer to 5'10". 
Four, 12 and third down conversions. Here's the 13th. It's third and three. Big rush. And a completion again to Scott. And a first down for South Carolina up at the 33-yard line. Torrey Francis finally brought him down. So all of a sudden, Brian Scott got a quiet in this game today. Two catches in a row, two big plays, and a game cock first down. Let me tell you how tough Phil Petty is right now. That's two plays in a row. He's released the football and gotten absolutely pounded and gotten right back up, even though he's playing with that very severely bruised throwing shoulder. Holding up pretty well so far, though. Out of the shotgun, he races up uh, under his center. And it's a running play to Brewer. He was spinning around, trying to fight for extra yards. He hit him behind and actually pushed him for a couple more yards. Chad Carson makes the tackle. Back down to Warren. You know, Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, on the other side of the field, they haven't had the kind of year that most Clemson defenses are used to having. He still believes the defensive players have the personality to dominate an opponent, even though they give up big plays. He says their attitude motivates him. And if you've ever seen him in action, it doesn't look like he needs much motivation, does it? <laughs> Talking to him this week was an absolute treat. Second down, Petty. And there it again. Catch by Scott. Up field. Look at him go. Into Clemson territory at the 49-yard line. And that's what frustrates Reggie Herring, who you saw a moment ago, the defensive coordinator for Clemson. The missed tackles. Brian Manson, a one-on-one -on -one situation. Scott just stepped right out of his tackle and picks up 10 more yards. Got a quickly moving third quarter. The Gamecocks with a field goal in it. And they've got the lead, and they're driving again on the inside slot, but uh, the reception made there by Scott against Manson and a good carry for a first down after the after the catch. And the ball on the Clemson side of the 50-yard line as the Gamecocks are on the move. That's Brewer going in motion, but the handoff is to Pinnock to the 40, to the 33-yard line. Nice misdirection there. Clemson not quite sure which guy was coming at them, and it was Pinnock, the big guy. 250 pounds barreling right up the middle, but they were too slow to react. Watch it again. The misdirection, Pinnock getting a good, a good block up along the line of scrimmage. Breaks another tackle there, and finally pulled down. I mean, you got to get him with two arms and uh, hopefully have some help when you pull him down, too. Pinnock's carried four times for 25, but he's been used mainly in the short yardage situations. Uh, third and one. That time, a nice run. Showing blitz up the middle. They come on a stunt. Petty delivers, and that's caught. It's Thomas. The 26-yard line. Brian Mance holding on. We talk about Clemson being shorthanded at wide receiver. The Gamecocks didn't uh, get all the receivers they thought they were going to have when the season began for various reasons, including injuries. But Matthew Thomas, another promising freshman, 6'1", 180 pounds, came into this game with 16 receptions. Well, this is a down. you got all kinds of options. It's second and three. You're deep in Clemson territory. Maybe you air it out. You've had success throwing the ball. Full house backfield right now with Pinnock in the middle. But it's Brewer with the football. Flags are flying. Brewer's got the first down at the, eight, at the 22, but the yellow flag on the field. I thought maybe Clemson had jumped offside, but uh, we'll wait for the official ruling. Well, we, we, we saw the players are not always reliable as indicators of which way the penalty is going. It's on the defense. Well, Clemson was offside. And they'll take those five yards, right? Even though he got the first down, uh, you'll get uh, some extra yards here. This is the second long drive of this quarter for Carolina. They came out with a seven minute and ten second drive. And here they're chewing up the remainder of the third quarter as well. I mean, one more play, and that's probably going to do it here. If that, in the third quarter, they may not have to run a play. Well, they do not have to because the uh, game clock says 10. Play clock hasn't even started yet. First down and 10. Two, one. Now the quarter has come to an end. This will not count. This will not count. Yeah, the third quarter is in the book. So the Gamecocks... Started as Jim said with that great seven minute drive for a field goal, and they're marching again. We'll go to the fourth quarter in Columbia. Stay with us. We got a good one going. We're starting the fourth quarter, and South Carolina's got the lead. Lou Holtz 15 minutes away from beating Clemson for the first time in his short reign here in Columbia. 
Ball's at the 20. South Carolina on the move, and then a quarterback, Corey Jenkins, and he's running. A couple of yards down to about the 18-yard line. 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 Scoring in the third quarter, field goal, which has given South Carolina their lead, 13-9. to nine. And Jenkins, although he's the backup quarterback, the third leading rusher for the Gamecocks on the season. They've been running the ball so effectively here. Look at Petty a breather and to probably run the football a little bit more, although we did see at least one time Jenkins throw a deep ball. And working out of the shotgun with uh, Watson uh, to his left. Watson's going to block for Jenkins as he tries to turn the corner. And fighting for some extra yards. Looks like a spot a yard shy of the first down. Down at the 12-yard line, Halfley. Finally forcing the play to the South Carolina side of the field. So he go got this third and one. You got to look at number four. And Skip Holtz is there sending in the play, but Pinnock shows you their guy in this type of situation. Pinnock uh, used Brewer a couple of times as well. Here we go. Third down, about a yard to go. And the Clemson 12-yard line, full house backfield. Here's your man Pinnock. He's got the first down to the 10-yard line. First and goal now for South Carolina. Warren's down on the field. Hey, Bill, when Pinnock was uh, 10 years old, we all know he's like 5'11", 250. Right now, when he was 10 years old, he was not allowed to play Pop Warner football, you know, Little League football. And the reason they wouldn't let him play, he was too big. He was hurting the other kids. Believe it or not, I had the same problem, but I wasn't that in that good of shape. It really didn't change. <laughs> <laughs> First and goal. Pinnock draw play. And with Petty back in at quarterback, but Javon Bush said, no way. Here's a look at the stats through three quarters of action brought to you by Choice Hotels International. And, Jim, you see Clemson now taking uh, taking it on the chin in that third quarter because South Carolina had the ball. Yeah, go to the bottom. Time of possession, and you see the Gamecocks' advantage there with over 26, uh, 26 minutes of possession there. And uh, you keep the ball out of Woody Dantzler's hands, as we said that way, and the Gamecocks really controlling and dominating the third quarter. Still going here on that same drive in the fourth quarter. Second down and goal. Watson, this is the score play they scored the touchdown on, but nothing doing this time. That sweep around the left side, but once again, Halfley came up from his safety position along with linebacker John Leak, and they, they, they closed it off. So now you've got a third down and goal from the eight-yard line. Charles Hafley pretty busy last week versus Maryland, moving over to that free safety position. He had 20 tackles earlier this year. He had 19 tackles versus the Tar Heels. Both of those school records, breaking his own school record with the 20. And if you're a Clemson uh, fan, you want somebody to make a big play. If you're a South Carolina fan, you're in great shape here. Bootleg by Petty, keeps it himself. One man to beat, dodges him to the one-yard line. Torrey Francis and Phil Petty meeting at the five. Petty with a nice cutback move, and it'll be fourth and goal from the one-yard line. Got him by the tippy toe, maybe a toe nail. <laughs> it was enough for Francis to bring him down, and here's your play of the game coming up right here. Going with the running quarterback. Yeah, putting in Corey Jenkins. Plenty of time on the play clock. It says 18 seconds. Fourth down and goal. The ball game may be won or lost on this play. The Gamecocks two of two and fourth down conversions in this one. Chicken first hanging in the balance. Option. Keeper. Touchdown. Gamecocks. Corey Jenkins. <laughs> As we pointed out, Jim, his story growing up in the shadows of this stadium. Finally got to play some football here, and he's in the end zone in the biggest game of his career so far. 24 years old, as you said, played four years of minor league baseball. Just arrived here in terms of being a college student again this past summer in August. A quick study, though. Extra point try is good. One more time, we're going to take a look at this touchdown as South Carolina has grabbed an 11-point lead over Clemson, 20-9. to 
Lou Holtz, if you look at him, you don't know if he's winning or losing. He's winning right now, Lou. You're up by 11. Meanwhile, Tommy Bowden cheering on his club because they've still got 12-27 to go here in the fourth quarter. But uh, South Carolina has taken a 20-9 lead. An impressive drive, 14 plays, 80 yards, and Corey Jenkins scored on a two-yard run. Kick off, Derek Hamilton for the Tigers from his one. And a nice return up to the 28-yard line. And Jim, you look at time of possession. At the end of the half, Clemson had the ball for a minute and a half more than South Carolina. Now the totals, South Carolina, 29 minutes and Clemson 18. Well, there's 624, but right there on that scoring drive, we mentioned an earlier scoring drive in the third quarter, seven minutes and 10 seconds. That's 13 and a half minutes on two drives. That's a great way of playing keep away and shortening the game. Now we'll see if the Clemson strategy changes here because we're down 11. That's a running play. Up the middle. This is Bernard Rambert. And Rambert, uh, nice move there. As Faison made the tackle. Up at the 36-yard line. And the Clemson, again, not in a hurry up here. We've seen this throughout the ball game. They're just, uh, Dantzler gets the call from the sideline, and they're already at the line of scrimmage. He relays the call to everybody else. Clemson running backs are not big-time breakaway threats. Dantzler the exception, of course. And his receivers are. Dantzler with the option. He's got a first down on the 41-yard line. Dantzler on the keeper. But here's your problem, Jim, in an offense like this, where you go, if you're going to use Dantzler a lot, you're going to chew up a lot of clock. But doesn't get enough credit for his ability to throw in. And we may see more of that here in this fourth quarter as they try to get downfield quickly. Because you're right, they do have some big play potential at receiver if the receivers can hang on to the football. Dantzler 10 to 20, 147 yards passing, 17 carries, 79 yards. Rampant, quick hitter left side, nothing. Rod Thomas makes the tackle. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. And uh, for all of us here, including our uh, director, Billy McCoy, and producer, Beverly Rumley, we wish you all a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. What time do you want me over? <laughs> the usual turkey time? I'm going out somewhere. Oh, thanks. You can meet me. <laughs> Dantzler hit as he throws. Free ball and incomplete. Good coverage downfield. Faison was all over Hamilton. And credit the rush. South Carolina finally got to Dantzler. And once he delivered the ball, his arm was coming forward, but he was getting pounded backwards. Knocked him out of his shoes. Had his uh, one shoe pop off and had to put it back on. And Again, a Gamecock defense that doesn't get a lot of heat on the quarterback throughout the course of the season, but when needed, stepping up there and making it difficult on Dancer to complete the long throw. The third downs hasn't been Clemson's forte, and this one three of ten. Third down and eight from their 44-yard line. And so looking, looking, throws, and it's dropped! Oh, should have been caught by Hamilton at the South Carolina 40. Dantzler says, I've seen this movie before. What were we just saying a couple of plays ago? Big play receivers potentially if they can hang on to the football. And that's the double-edged sword of the young talent. It's young talent that's probably in two or three years going to be outstanding talent. And Derek Hamilton may be the best of them all. But this is right on the money for a first down and just flying out drive. <laughs> You know, you can coach your players to get in position, get them the X's and O's, but eventually they have to make the play. Here's the punt by Cop. It's a high floater. Here's Brewer, he's 22. And we got about three to the 25, and we got the flag on the play. Both sides of the field. Penalties have settled down here in the second half compared to the first half, though, and really haven't become the factor they were in the, uh, the first half of this football game. So now Lou Holtz, Skip Holtz, uh, well, let's listen to the call. On the here. return, we have a block in the back. That's a 10 yard penalty and first down. The poor field position hasn't been uh, a big distraction for Carolina. They've had some long drives despite being backed up. Lou Holtz, not far away from the win, but still a ways to go. 
is your score. South Carolina's got the lead and the football. Deep in their own territory. And Petty back in the quarterback. And counterplay. Pinnock to about the 18-yard line. Well, Jim, Jim, I got to think they're going to just run and pound the ball and work on the clock now. Yeah, I was going to say, if Carolina throws the ball at all, it's going to be something real conservative, uh, basically a long handoff kind of a throw. And even that would be a risk in that it would stop the clock. So, yeah, expect Carolina to, to run the ball, and they've certainly got enough talent and uh, backs there, including their quarterback, to be able to run the ball. Got the information for Petty. Second down and five. Now he comes under his center. Pinnock again. Ooh, big hole there. Minnick throws, but Pinnock fighting close to a first down. John Leak is holding on there. Makes the tackle for Clemson. There's our score. Let's take a look at some other scores from around college football. As, uh, we wind this season down. Well, Ole Miss was ahead early, but it's Georgia late. Is that for real? Oh. How about that? Unbelievable. This on the heels of Kentucky losing to Western Carolina in basketball. So, saving some headlines for Tubby Smith for a while. <laughs> <laughs> of course, bull bids are on the line. South Carolina looking at uh, maybe a citrus bull berth. Out back in the peach or a possibility. Clemson, tangerine bull, maybe a gator bull berth, depending on how things play out. they got to win one more, though. Yeah, they, they're not bull eligible yet. So, seeing with Kentucky there, never assume anything. Shy the first down, so they'll uh, take the chain gang over to the far side of the field. South Carolina, six first downs in this first half. Clemson, one. They've dominated this half, basically controlling the football. And they've scored ten points in the second half. Third, less than a yard. Full house backfield. Quarterback keeper by Penny. He's got it. Looked like one of the Tigers might have snuck offside, but no flag. Javon Bush anticipating the snap correctly. Gutty performance by Phil Petty today. We'll probably never know the full extent of just how banged up that right shoulder is for him today, but he's, he's taken some tough licks. He's run the ball about as much as he normally does. He'll get a breather here, but Phil Petty's done a terrific job on senior day, coming up big in his final home game. We got Corey Jenkins uh, in a quarterback as the QB shuffle continues. First down from the 25. Pinnock, draw play. Oh, breaks a tackle. He's up to the 32-yard line. Once again, Rodney Thomas makes the tackle. But now South Carolina, Jim, when you get five, six, seven yards on first down, boy, you've got, uh, you're having your way at the line of scrimmage. Lou Holtz raved about his offensive line in our meeting with him yesterday. All across, 300 pounders there, including the senior in the middle, Laurel Johnson, Melvin Page at right tackle, another senior who's battling some back spasms. Those are the two seniors along the line. We have Shane Hall, Cedric Williams, and Trevor Wharton. I mean, this is a big, stout offensive line. They're getting the job done. Shotgun formation again. Quarterback keeper. First down and more to the 43-yard line for Corey Jenkins. And I'll tell you, the other guy who has come in and done a nice job for South Carolina, and that is John Strickland, number 74. Remember, Johnson, their center, got hurt in the first half. They actually put Fry in for a while. But this guy's come in. He's done a great job in the offensive line. And now Carolina working on the clock. We're almost halfway through the fourth quarter, and they've got an 11-point lead. The second half, and this is the third long drive, just running the football they've had since the break. He'll give it to Pinnock this time. Powers his way in the Clemson territory at the 48-yard line. Halfway and Sampson on the tackle. Old-time football. Just line it up, run it, stop us. See you try. And Cedric Williams, one of the offensive linemen. These are the guys you don't talk about a whole heck of a lot unless they miss a block or allow a quarterback sack. But look at the hole on the little counter. And we're talking about running the football here, but Lou Holtz, his first season here, which, of course, was uh, was tough on everybody, 48 quarterback sacks allowed that season. This year, they've only allowed 11 in the first 10 games. And Strickland, the center now, is a redshirt freshman. Quarterback keeper again, not this time. Zachary brought down in the backfield, down on the 47-yard line. Rodney Feaster from Chester, South Carolina, makes the play for the Tigers. But the clock is ticking. South Carolina content to run the football, and why not? You're really, Jim, three scores for Clemson. They need a touchdown, a two-pointer, and a field goal. Mm -hmm. 
game of keep away and South Carolina's played it very well here in the second half. It's up to Clemson to stop them and get the football back here on third and five. Petty's back in a QB, by the way. Pumps. Well, he had Thomas downfield, but just plain out missed him. Thomas almost like stopped for a second. Then he broke. And Petty, I think, expecting him just to run that fly pattern uh, down the sideline. Threw it upfield. And of course, the risk you take there is you stop the clock on the incompletion, but you're trying to trying to finish a team off. And so that's a worthwhile play there. Well, if there are any doubts about the Gamecocks of being uh, weary from that Florida game last week. A slow start today, but they've really come on here in the second half. There's the punt by Tyler Dane. It's at the 15-yard line and will be picked up by the Clemson back. That might have been a mistake. Joe that Donald was Reams. Reams. Yeah, Reams picked it up. So Clemson behind the eight ball here. A long way to go and trailing South Carolina by 11 here in the fourth quarter. Carolina with the lead. Clemson's got the ball at their 15-yard line, and here are the first down numbers, and what a difference a half makes. Can't get a first down if you don't have the football. Dantzler. He's going to be sacked by Neesmith back at the four-yard line. Dantzler never had a chance. Dropped back to throw, looked upfield, and as soon as he did, all he saw was Neesmith coming in his face. Usually when a guy comes free like that, somebody uh, he usually comes unblocked. Dantzler never had a chance. Going no huddle this time, and it's more of a hurry-up offense. Back at their own four-yard line, second and 21. So rolling to the far side, then he dumps it off with a completion, but not much there up to about the nine yard line on the receiving end was Aris Curry trying to get some operating room but now you're looking at third down and 17 backed up against your own goal line here answer just trying to make something happen had to go to the safety valve nothing open up field Carolina doing a good job of taking away the deep threats passing down here third and 17 with some time far sideline up for grabs and caught at the 45 yard line J.J. McKelvey and I'm surprised I thought Sheldon Brown had a measure Sheldon Brown is actually behind the receiver and lets the receiver step in front of him and jump up and catch the football here's a throw up the sideline and it's a jump on and Brown's just hanging back there instead of stepping up and knocking it down. He hung behind the receiver and allowed that catch to happen. Brown's got two interceptions, both in the first half. So the Tigers with a big play and a receiver holding on to the ball. And they're on 45. Wrestler again with time. Now he's going to run it. Midfield. And in the South Carolina territory, Woody Dantzler gets his team now inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Good block by Travis Zachary upfield, allowing Dantzler to get an extra 8 or 10 yards and get out of bounds and make that into a big play. And you can see the intensity. You can see the urgency now in this Clemson offense. And that clock's starting to tick a little bit uh, slower now for the Gamecock fans here. From the South Carolina 38-yard line. First down and 10 Clemson. Play action. Swings it out to Zachary. Hit as he caught the football at the 34-yard line. Sheldon Brown didn't lay off the receiver that time. Read the play beautifully. It was a play action to Zachary. He came out of the backfield and got popped. Preseason candidate for the Thorpe Award is Sheldon Brown, as he said. Uh, uh, didn't get the deflection on the long ball, but here on the shorter route, hello, Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapped him up and dropped him. There's a quick out. That's a completion, but the receiver falls to the turf. Crosby grabbed it. College foot. So back down on the sidelines to Warren. You know, Coach Holtz has talked about how important it is to win this game for a number of reasons. Is Clemson going to be able to come back with just three and a half? South Carolina trying to win eight games for just the third time in 108 years, and it can come against a team they want to beat the most. 
Third down five. Quarterback draw. First down and plenty more. Gensler keeps the lights turning to the 15-yard line. First down and 10 Tigers. Late penalty flag after the play. And you're seeing what a special player Woody Dantzler is. You can talk about it and talk about it and talk about the numbers, but you have to see him play to appreciate just what he play, can do. We have a five-yard incidental face mask. That'll be added to the end of the run. First down. So the incident will be a five-yard penalty. But Dantzler, you just have to see him play in the open field and how he creates something out of nothing. Quarterback draw keeps it. They convert on a long third and 17 back at their own goal line earlier in this drive and then give him some operating room, and he's tough to bring down. He's a special, special player. Lou Holt says he hasn't seen a player like him that he's coached against since Roger Staubach. That's going back, and Dantzler didn't know who Staubach was. <laughs> First down, 10 Tigers at the 11 of South Carolina. Hansler rolling out. Floats it in the end zone. Touchdown! Derek Hamilton! That just curse isn't dead quite yet. <laughs> no, it's not. And nice move by Hamilton to get free as Dantzler rolled out. No, he's been running the ball. If you're a defensive back, you got to start looking at him. And Hamilton found himself open in the corner of the end zone, and now Clemson has to go for two points here. Hamilton with a critical drop on a third down in the previous drive. There he pays off with the touchdown. That's a young talent. You live with it and you die with it. Now we'll see what Dantzler does. He may be the only player who touches the ball here. A two-point conversion. The score is 20 to 15. South Carolina. Clemson going for two. Dantzler takes the snap. Plenty of time. Rifles it. Intercepted in the end zone. Coming back upfield, Andre Goodman. You can return these in college football, and he's up to the 27-yard line. Well, Andre Goodman getting a little payback for last year. When Rod Gardner made the big catch against him, that set the game-winning field goal right now. Goodman the hero. The plot thickens here in Columbia. It ain't over yet. South Carolina is still on top. If you thought this game was over a few moments ago with South Carolina leading by 11, you haven't followed this series very much. Clemson has just scored on an eight-play, 85-yard drive. They have cut the gap to five points. They did try for two. It was intercepted by Andre Goodman. And now, are we going to have the onside kick? It certainly looks like it. The way they're lining up. Well, Carolina think it that way. They have no one deeper than the 23-yard uh, line right now, so the good hands team is on the field. Mazzara well, does the kicking. Bounce, but South Carolina has it at the 50-yard line. And in all honesty, that was not a real good onside kick. you got to give your guys a chance to get to the ball. Sheldon Brown... He's had a couple of big plays defensively, interceptions in this game. Maybe the biggest play of the game, getting that football at midfield. Got a friendly bounce. Some teams will kick it real hard, try to get that ricochet. Some will go for the, the high looping kick, and that one was kind of somewhere in between. Now, if you're going to kick that bouncer, you need that ball to go way up in the air and give your guys a chance as it comes down to get underneath it. But uh, in, in all honesty, the Tiger special teams unit there had no chance to get it. So now, Clemson has three timeouts. It's South Carolina ball at midfield. Phil Petty in at quarterback, and they've got a five-point lead. Running play, Bennett grinding his way inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. And how big has he been in the second half of this game, just continuing to get the tough yardage between the tackles behind that big offensive line? is moving. It'll be second down. Three yards to go. Jenkins now comes back in a QB for the Gamecocks. Nothing but running plays the rest of the way out here for Carolina. Got your option quarterback on the field. And his touchdown the lead touchdown in this game. Ooh. Take the hand off to Pinnock and and she banged into him, but he was able to hold on to the football. Jenkins, a keeper down to the 41. That'll set up a third and one. Yeah, what you don't want is Joe Pisarczyk out there. At <laughs> <laughs> the Meadowlands. <laughs> Trying to run a handoff, and you run into your own guy. So now Clemson has called a timeout. Timeout. 
Now time for our look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the Game, brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And uh, Jim, this is the South Carolina touchdown to take the lead. Or to add to the lead, actually, the quarterback keeper by Corey Jenkins. And as we said, a magical moment for him from about a yard out. plays 80 yards 627 it was their second long drive of the second half they had another drive in the uh, third quarter that was longer than that seven minutes and ten seconds as well so those two drives and the fact that they've run the ball so effectively here in the second half playing a great game of keep away has been the difference here you know, Woody Dance was shown he can strike quickly so it's up to them to see if they can finish it off by picking up a few more first downs and burning up these clubs and timeouts See what Warren's got down on the sideline. Yeah, Bill has not lost on me, and I'm sure folks watching all around the state recognize what a feeling it must be right now for Andre Goodman. He was a young man involved in that little tussle with Rod Gardner that won the play of Clemson a year ago, right? No call on that pass reception. Then he comes up with that interception in the end zone on the two-point conversion attempt just moments ago. There's a big third and one. They have to get to the 40 for a first down. Pinnock, he's got the first down and more. Can he ice the game? He's to the 22-yard line. Hefley chased him down. Pinnock with his arms raised to the sky. He just continues to pound the Clemson defensive line, and he has racked up big running yardage here in the second half, and that's been so key in just containing the clock. As you said, a first down here. All they can do is try to drag him down from behind. Pinnock 12 carries 79 yards, and most of those, 73 of those in the second half. And you see that Tennessee-Kentucky score nine minutes left in that game. Pinnock got it again. And he runs for two yards to the 20. And the clock a major factor with 107. Clemson has used one timeout. They will use another. So only one more chance to stop the clock for the Tigers. Pendix could be sore tomorrow. He's not used to running the ball this often. It'd be a good kind of tired, though. They've, uh, they've waited a long time for this moment here. They're close to it. Not quite there. There's a lot of folks in this stadium <laughs> for this moment. Yep. They're cheering, but they're holding their breath while they cheer because there's still a minute seven left on this clock. And they had the lead with 59 seconds to go. Warren alluded to that a moment ago. Andre Goodman... Uh, beaten, maybe pushed by Rod Gardner, depending on your point of view for what set up the winning field goal. That was a 50-yard pass a year ago that set up the winning points in a 16-14 victory for Clemson, and Goodman coming back by uh, snuffing out the two-point conversion with the interception. All right, well, Clemson hosted the 1996 rivalry, and they led South Carolina 14-3 at the half. An injured Deuce Staley was forced to the sidelines, so true freshman Troy Hambrick comes in and scampers 75 yards for the touchdown, giving the Gamecocks a 34-17 lead with eight minutes left in the game. But the Tigers have come roaring back. First green and Wofford hook up for a touchdown. And this Raymond Priester score closes the gap to three points. One more time, Clemson drives downfield. Matt Padgett's field goal, no good. Wide left, South Carolina holds on for a 34-31 victory. Second down, running play. Watson this time. Let's see what Jenkins keeps it this time. So Jenkins stays in the backfield with uh, Petty and a QB. And now they're down to third down, and the clock is ticking, and Clemson, uh, they've got one timeout left. And obviously not using it. Yeah, third down here. Want to see if they can make Carolina run one more play and then maybe stop the clock. Only 10 seconds left on the play clock here, and Petty will call a timeout just before that expires. See him huddled at the top of the screen with the referee and calling for the timeout. There you go. Carolina calls a timeout. So you would assume they would come back out and run the football and force... The Tigers to use their final timeout, and then it'll be an interesting call if it's uh, on fourth down. Do you kick a field goal and try to get your lead 
Back to eight points. Do you risk the block? That's what's being talked about on both sidelines right now, the strategy for these final 28 seconds. The chess match continues. That Skip Holtz talking with his offense. Meanwhile, December 1st, Woody Woodenhofer's finale for Vanderbilt. The opponent's Old Miss. 1230 kickoff should be a good one. Right here on your Jeff Pilot Station. Another Manning at quarterback, Eli. Had a terrific season as a sophomore. Yeah, he, he went to where Daddy played. Hey, Peyton's probably a little sore this week. That's an airline fracture. His jaw. Yeah, he doesn't have bedroom jazz. <laughs> so. yeah, you mentioned Troy Hambrick. Uh, the highlights are going to go. He's, he's going to be the guy in Dallas. Emmett Smith is back, but he had a big game. 127 yards rushing for the Cowboys. There's your South Carolina offense set up to run this play. That was a, a good shot on the sidelines of Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator for Clemson. It is third down and eight, 28 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. I think they're going to run. Brewer. Cuts back left. Just using some time on the clock. Ta uh, tackle at the 18, and now Clemson utilizes their final timeout with 22 seconds to go. So now a fourth down decision for the Holtzes. <laughs> Do you want to kick a field goal? Go up eight points. Do you risk the block? Do you just run a play? And if you do, that would be a turnover on downs, and Clemson would be stuck deep in their own territory at their own 15-yard line. Look at Reggie Herring, now Tommy Bowden on the Clemson sidelines. All they can do is wait and react. What do you think? Well, you know, it's interesting because they've got the kicker, uh, Weaver, kind of extended far away from the huddle on the sideline there and not part of the conversation. So it's, it's not looking good for the kicker right now. Well, it's typical of most kickers, though. None of them are ever involved in the huddle. <laughs> Even when they go to the pros, they practice on the other side of the field. Uh, but they can uh, certainly win or lose a football game for you. It's been a, a game of field position. You've got Clemson backed up right now. No matter what kind of a chance you want to take. And our game situation has been this. Uh, Clemson got the early lead on a touchdown pass. Uh, South Carolina, however, would battle back and lead 10-9 at the half. The Gamecocks dominate the second half possession-wise, time-wise, and on the scoreboard, scoring 10 unanswered points until the Tigers, a little while ago, got on the board again on another touchdown pass by Woody Dantzler. As we suspected with the kicker lingering in the distance, he'll not get a chance here. Yep, run some more time, and then Clemson will come back out and have a shot. Well, here's the call by South Carolina. It is fourth down, six yards to go. They're at the 18 of the Tigers. Oops. Oh, runs into Pinnock. We're lucky to hold onto the ball. And uh, some oohs and ahs from this crowd here at williams Bryce Stadium. And uh, that play took about five seconds, so 17 seconds left. Clemson is out of timeouts, and the ball is at their 20-yard line. So it stops the change of possession. Remember, it was a year ago in this football game that Clemson was at their own 42 with 19 seconds to go. Here they'll have to go a little bit further and with a little bit less time to try to pull off some magic, but they need a touchdown. Field goal's not going to get it done this time. Everybody's heart's in their mouth here right now. Woody Dantzler. Will he weave some magic for the second year in a row against South Carolina? It'll be a three-man game pack rush. Dantzler with the ball. Plenty of time. Downfield incomplete. Intended receiver was Matt Bailey. That wasn't close. Ten seconds left. Second down and ten. Overthrown on that one. Dancer likes to do that kind of uh, filter out to one side. See if he can find some misdirection and draw the defense with him. But he ended up throwing to that same side. And he said uh, chewed up seven seconds. So one, probably two more plays here. Probably two more shots here for Clemson. So again, stepping back to his left. Cox the arm. There it goes. Free ball downfield, tip. Uh -oh. oh, and it's incomplete. Oh. My goodness. Oh. Aries Curry. Oh, we got a penalty. And the ball game's over. The clock has run out. That play took 10 seconds, and it's over. Lou Holtz and the Gamecocks have finally done it. 
They have knocked off the Clemson Tigers. Chicken curse is dead. And those goalposts, they'll be at five points tonight. <laughs> well, it wasn't over until the final play. And if you're a South Carolina fan, you gotta love the guy running the clock. That play took 10 seconds and was almost caught. But it fell incomplete. What a dramatic ending here at williams Bryce Stadium. It's been 14 years since the Gamecocks have beaten Clemson in this stadium. And the long wait is finally over. 20 to 15, Lou Holtz, another notch on his belt here. Told you at one point, it was one thing to turn this program around. Got to eight and four last year. A big win here today because, as we said, there's the, the three big ones that South Carolina wants to win. The game against Florida, Tennessee, and this one. They couldn't beat Florida, couldn't beat Tennessee, but they finally got the Tigers. One more time. Jim, here's the last play. Yeah, almost tipped. And remember, the, the clock would stop perhaps on a first down, but that 10 seconds went by pretty quickly. <laughs> good throw. I was surprised. Clemson had such a good shot at it. The two defenders came up short, and you, for just a moment, you, you hold your breath. Because if Curry catches that, there might not be a defender between him and the goal line. Yeah, and uh, the guy who finally hits Curry is maybe the guy with the biggest game defensively, Sheldon Brown. Two interceptions. And uh, he's the, the last gasp here for the Gamecocks defense, and he's right on his back. I'll tell you what else. The folks in Columbia will be glad that Woody Dantzler is graduating because uh, he has been a thorn in their side, and you never feel safe until that clock has triple zeros on it because Dantzler can make something special happen in any moment. But for this particular year, 2001, a space odyssey, <laughs> Gamecocks break that chicken curse in 2001.